Welcome. I am calling to order this meeting of the On Select Board on Monday, December 5th, 2022. I'm Select Board Chair Linda Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diana Hahn? Affirmative. John Hurd? Yes. Steve Corsi? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sandy Pooler? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. Ashley Meyer? Yes. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, signed into law on July 17, 2022, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation until March 31st, 2023. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, which is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Participants by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the notice agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's step forth on tonight's agenda and next is the land acknowledgement. I would like to read the land acknowledgement that the board supported in the spring of 2021 and that was adopted at the 2021 annual town meeting. We acknowledge that the town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. Next on the agenda is acknowledgement of an expression of appreciation to Kevin Mills, the former member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Kevin's not able to join us tonight, and so we're going to postpone this till either the uh, our meeting on the 21st or the first um, meeting in January. But uh, you do have the, the letter that I crafted for him, and I'll ask my colleagues me to take a look at it, and if you um, think that it can be improved uh, in any way, uh, uh, please uh, hesitate to let me know. Uh, this is something that I'm you know, just kind of, I mean, it's, it's something I've been wanting to do. I mean, we did it for uh, the, the chair of TAC um, when, when he retired from, from um, the Transportation Advisory Committee, you know, and it's something that you know, I would like to do more of, I mean, to the extent possible. I mean, certainly, you know, I think if you read the letter, I mean, it's very insightful, I mean, uh, about Kevin, I mean, and his relationship uh, with his colleagues. And so I think often in expression of appreciation, uh, we we benefit from it probably as much, if not more, I mean, than the person that to whom we're trying to express appreciation. So once again, if um, you see anything that, any way you approve it, I mean, wordsmithing, um, overall content, whatever, I mean, I welcome your input. And so um, next we'll move on to the review and to approve bond issue, bond into, I'm sorry, excuse me, to review and approve a bond issue, bond anticipor, anticipation notes and related matters. Uh, well, I'll now turn it over to the Cindy Puller, the town manager. Thank you. Uh, on Thursday, December 1st, the town conducted a bond sale, uh, which is basically an auction. Uh, we had uh, several bidders for both our bonds and our bond anticipation notes. At that uh, time, we sold um, $8,515,000 uh, dollars worth of bonds, um, which was actually a gross total of $8,945,000, but at the sale we received uh, cash payments of $430,000 uh, in premium pay, uh, or premiums, to bringing down the amount of the bond to $8,515,000. These are general obligation bonds, and they are mostly for the construction of the new DPW facility, plus all of the bonded capital projects that were approved by town meeting last spring. In addition to that, on that date, uh, we sold uh, $4,607,401 worth of 
bond anticipation notes. Those are essentially bridge loans that we pay interest on uh, for a year and um, we will then convert to permanent bonds uh, next year. The interest rate on the bonds was 3.77%, uh, which was good because we had budgeted for um, <coughs> originally for 4%, and, and lately we were thinking it might be as high as 5.5%, so we're very happy with this sale. It is higher than we got about a year ago, which was just under 2%, but that is, is the market. The interest rate on the bands was 3.1336%, um, and I think it very interestingly shows that we have a very flat yield curve. In other words, the short-term interest rates and the long-term interest rates are very, very close to each other. That's sort of unusual. Um, I think it reflects the fact that on the short-term interest rates, people are paying a lot of attention to what the Fed is doing and raising its rent interest rates, but that people think over the next 20 years that the uh, true interest rates that they're going to have to deal with um, aren't going to be that much higher. Um, we issued uh, bands because uh, we're not yet finished with the DPW project, but we expect to be done with the construction by the time uh, we need to go out for bonding again. Um, and so what we do in that last phase of almost any project is instead of selling the full amount of bonds, uh, which might mean that we borrow too much if the project comes in under budget, we sell a band and then once we know the final project cost, we then only sell the bond for the uh, remainder of the project. The one other thing I just mentioned in case you are interested in, in it is that usually we sell our bonds in February, but this year we decided to do it in December because we know that the Fed has at least one more mm. meeting where it's expected to raise interest rates again, so we thought that this was a good time to, um, to borrow the money. Overall, I think we've had very good success with selling our bonds, um, both for all of our projects. Um, the fact of the matter is that we've previously sold permanent bonds for the first part of the DPW project at very, very good interest rates. Um, and so and now we're just kind of closing things out. Um, you have before you um, a few votes. Uh, one, a determination of the maximum useful life of capital assets purchases. Um, it's something that the board needs to vote um, to declare um, how long the useful life of various pieces of equipment are. Um, that is laid out in the draft vote for you. Um, the other thing then is, is B, um, actually approving the award of sale. Um, we, the sale, so what there is first the award of sale of the bond and then the award of sale of the band. band. Um, and then um, once that vote is voted, uh, we will have to circulate to you, which we do not have tonight, the documents that you'll have to sign to uh, affirm all that. Uh, with that, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And you can just raise your hands. I can see clearly enough, so we don't have to go down the line unless you just want to go. Ms. Mahan? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this borrowing, I know it's for um, DPW, but I have a memory. Does it cover other projects? Yes, there were a number of projects that were voted in the capital plan at town meeting last spring, at, you know, buying trucks and uh, in fact, it, it lists some of them here. A street sweeper, uh, a couple of smaller fire replacement vehicles, a cemetery backhoe, uh, a fire alarm uh, system, and a forklift. So basically anything in the capital plan that's worth $100,000 or more, we tend to bond for. So th this borrowing covers the initial DPW, what we need right now, town meeting votes, the second borrowing. This, this borrowing covers everything. The second borrowing will just be for the DPW. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the band. Unless something else comes up, I'm just. No, that you, you have it exactly right. Okay. Um, we, so we're, we're basically putting a pile of cash together, some from a bond and some from a band. Those two together should 
get us to the end of the DPW project. Um, if, it, uh, if it comes in exactly on budget, then we'll sell a bond at that point for the exact amount of the ban we just sold and pay that out over time. Mm -hmm. If it comes in un under budget, we'll sell a smaller bond and pay that over time. So we just have to see what the final cost is going to be. And we should know that by next fall. Okay. Um, I'd like to um, move favorable action for the sale of the bond and bond anticipation notes closing on December 15, 2022, as well as the um, determination and approval of the maximum life of department equipment as contained here in, in the memo and recommended vote. Is that good? That, that's okay. very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, excuse me, I just wanted to check with um, Attorney Heim. I mean, so we can do all these votes at once, or I was, I was getting the impression we had to do separate oh. votes? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you can do these all at once. The Treasurer has recommended basically a form vote. While it says further voted, essentially each one of those further voted items is a further detail or qualification on the entirety. So you, you can take one vote as uh, proposed by the Treasurer and given your reference materials for the public to follow along. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Second. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, any other questions, comments? Okay, well, let's just hope that that um, flat yield curve doesn't invert me because that will indicate a recession, and that's not good for anybody. So on a motion to um, uh, approve the, the sale of the bonds mean and the bans mean and the uh, assessment of the lifetime of the uh, equipment mean and capital purchases mean uh, by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Heim. Yes. Mr. DeCourse. Yes. Mr. Helm. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. So um, I think that's it, Mr. Kohler. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, great. So we'll now move on to item number five on the agenda is a discussion and vote. The town manager position search statement and um, a discussion about the selection committee. So, um, can we bring in Mr. Lynch? It doesn't look like his name is listed under the attendees. If someone wants to raise their hand, that may be with Mr. Lynch. I can promote you. If I see anyone else. I see Sharon Flaherty. I know I received yeah, yeah, her. So she, yeah, maybe Sharon's filling in, and Sharon certainly is on part of community paradigm. So let's bring in Sharon, please. Good evening. Hi, Ms. Flaherty. Thank you for joining us. In... Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Lynch is juggling a couple of meetings, so he's going to be here as soon as he can. Okay. All right. That's fine. You know. So, um, all right. But I think I think we are you are you comfortable moving on now? Or would you like us to wait a bit? Absolutely. We can certainly go through um, the position statement if you'd like. Okay. okay. Great. Please. Let's do. Let's do that. Great, great. Well, it was, as you know, it was um, a version two. I had requested some feedback from board members if they if there was any feedback to be had. I did make some revisions based upon recommendations received, um, waited for any further input, and then sent it back out today earlier today. Um, so the board members should all have received that this early this afternoon, and it should be in your packet, I believe. And if there's any any other changes or discussions regarding the position statement, I'm happy to hear those and, and make changes. Great, thank you. So, so turn to my colleagues. Um, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the work that went into this and the revisions. Um, I would prefer not to name the salary. Mm. 
I don't. Sh I actually don't know what plus or minus means. I'm not sure that's what that signifies. But regardless, I don't think I know what the salary is. I think that that really will depend on the applicants, their years of experience, their qualifications. It's not a secret what our past two town managers or any of them have made. But I, my concern would be that that would be misleading. Um, and um, you know, I'm a strong proponent of paying our employees what they're worth, because I think we, you get what you pay for, and the market is the market. But I don't know what the market is. You know, I think we're going to find out when we go through the applicants and have those discussions. So that would be my uh, main substantive feedback on this. Anyone else? Mr. Hart? I would say I, I'm fine not having the salary on there. I would just ask the consultant if it's if that in your experience has, can affect the mm. ability to draw candidates. If not, then I think it's fine to not have a salary and we can come up with it as we find a candidate. Ms. Flaherty? We have always listed, pretty much always have listed a salary. I can tell you that will be the first question and people will not apply without having reached out to hear what what the salary, the ballpark will be for the salary. Understanding that a plus or minus means it depends on qualifications, experience. It could be less if you have less experience. It could be more if you're a stellar candidate that, that the town really wants to pull in. Um, so there are some advertisements that we would need to list a salary in order to place the ad. There's a couple of those that we usually use. Okay, thank you, Ms. Flaherty. You know, and I think Mr. Lynch has joined us. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 uh, good evening, everyone. And I, I was able, I was just brought in as a panelist, but I was able to listen to a few of the comments uh, before that. Uh, and I just caught a little bit of what Sharon was saying there. Um, many of the places that this position will be posted, Sharon may have already said this, uh, many of the places that, where this will be posted actually require us to place some type of salary uh, uh, range in there. Um, it, it obviously, um, you know, if we advertise in a, in a place or post a position in a place that we don't have to do that, you know, we, I guess we wouldn't have to, but it is a, it is a question. It is, does sort of drive people's, it gets people's attention to have some sense of what the salary is. Uh, the, the plus or minus is a pretty standard, uh, uh terminology. Uh, it basically indicates that the salary, the given salary is uh, sort of the midway point, that you can go a little bit more if you find a candidate that um, uh, is particularly uh, experienced and attractive to you <clears throat> because of the skills they bring to the table. Or you could pay a little bit less if they may not have everything that you're looking for and uh, may not have quite as much experience. So it provides some sort of range for people and it's a uh, uh, some communities opt to put a definitive, you know, first step, top step, uh, and let uh, the negotiations fall into that category. What we find is if there can be an attractive number that's put in there that uh, gets people's attention, that they can uh, sort of count on that sort of uh, a salary number, uh, that gets their attention and uh, you know, generates the interest in the position. So it is, if you look at the... Um, uh, MMA, uh, job board, you look at the ICMA, you look at the emerging local government leaders uh, organization, um, you know, those are the, the women leading government uh, organization. Uh, these are all uh, pretty standard to have some type of salary in there. All right, thanks for so much. And, um, anyone else? Mrs. Ms. Mahan? Chair. I th I'm not sure, I, I wanna go next, but um, was Mr. Howard, were you finished? Well, I just want to follow up and just mm -hmm. say, if that was the yeah. case, I think we're, I think $220,000 is on the high end mm -hmm. of the, I would be more comfortable with a range. So people don't, I think people see 220,000, like, all right, I'm going to get 220,000 plus or minus 5,000. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, Mr. Chaplain got his cha salary because he was here for a long, long time and we valued him as one of the most qualified town managers in the state and same thing with Mr. Pooler, but I don't know that we're, I, for someone to come in at the top of the range of what around $220,000 of 
salary, that seems that that would be really a bang out idea, like an incredible candidate that had other offers that we really wanted to make sure that we, we brought to Arlington. So I, I think it's a little misleading because I think when we had spoken pre, I mean, in other negotiations, I think our starting point hasn't been $220,000. So I think that's high, um, even for a mid-range. I think that's the top of the range. So, I mean, I would almost suggest putting something from uh, just to throw out numbers, like $170,000 to $220,000 uh, range. If, if, uh, if, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, yes please. Um, I think, um, and I, I'm happy to share information with the with the board on the the going rates. I literally just got off the um, another Zoom call with the town of Sudbury, uh, which is uh, going to be uh, paying two hundred fifteen thousand uh, dollars for their uh, town manager. Um, the town of uh, I have all the salary information, or I should say, all the salary information I have. Uh, quite a bit of new salary information as of just this past November for a number of communities uh, in the um, uh, in the same area as uh, Arlington, and everything is north of 200. Uh, everything is uh, for base salary. They range from um, really the 200, that 215 thousand uh, dollars up to uh, uh, 247 thousand uh, dollars. For the neighboring town of Lexington, uh, the town of Westford uh, just went out and they advertised at two hundred ten to two hundred thirty thousand dollars. So, I think you, if you, if you're looking to get a a, a candidate that um, it, you know meets the the qualification standards that that I think are, is included within this position profile, uh, I think you you're going to have to pay. If you don't want to put 220, you know, I, I would recommend that you go at least 215, uh, and that that gives you some sense of, you know, uh, or if you if you want to go a range, I, I started started a, a lower salary and just put a plus, um, that would at least give someone a sense that they'd be coming in at a minimum of 200, let's say, uh, as a number, uh, and and move up from there. But um, the market right now for, for managers is such that uh, in order to get someone of the, the quality that Arlington uh, would likely want, uh, you're, you're going to have to put that type of salary number out there. Thank you so much. Hey, Ms. Mahan? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, having been through this many times, um, First, I would say with all due respect, it's this board's um, decision what to, to, to list for a range. Um, so we've definitely heard your arguments, and I shouldn't say arguments, your, your statement. Um, but don't need to hear it any more in the sense of Arlington, besides Brookline, is really the coup de grace, the plum job um, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for up-and-coming managers. Um, and, and, and that's pretty well known. And um, I would like to do um, a range also, 170 to 220, 180 to 220. Um, and if you want to put the plus and minus in there, that's fine. Only because um, I don't, first of all, the board has to negotiate the, the salary and um, tying our hands at the very beginning, putting the top number of what I consider um, for town manager sort of, uh, for me, handicaps, I think, my ability, number one. Number two, um, uh, I'd like to see the range, knowing that in all probability we're going to go towards the higher end versus the lower end of 170, 180, but I think it's also um, could send a message, someone they're a professional, not that they would take it this way, but that, you know, if it says 220 and we're negotiating somewhat something lower than that, especially if we get a candidate, as the statement says, that will 
give, and we will, serious consideration to applications from non-traditional candidates who display exceptional characteristics and the necessary aptitude for this position, along with the fact that we're requiring a bachelor's degree with a master, master's preferred, um, I'd like to just say master's preferred, because um, we've always had that, but I'm okay to go along with that. But um, to me, that plays into having a range if, um, you know, s somebody c can look at it, and if it is someone that we take with that one line that we have in there about a non-traditional candidate, and I know what that means in, 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 in the business world, it could mean anything. Um, we aren't sort of insulting them if we give them, because they are a non-traditional candidate, and perhaps um, the experience isn't exactly as we've outlined and crafted, but we see great poten potential and want to do that. Um, I don't want them to feel like, you know, we really tried to go sort of bargain basement and didn't give them that 220. I think having that 220 really um, handicaps us in terms of negotiating, which everybody on this board um, in their current job here as well as um, their day-to-day -day jobs is, is very familiar with. Um, and it's really precarious when you get into the, I don't want to be fighting the ghost of 220 plus or minus. So I'd like to go with a range. Um, I, I'm happy with 170 to 220 plus or minus, 180 to 220 plus or minus, but I'd, I'd like to hear from my colleagues. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Mr. Corsi, does he, I see you, Mr. Corsi, yes. thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I think you know, from, the, from the earlier comments, um, I don't think there's going to be a consensus putting the 220 plus or minus. I personally i am not crazy about a range, but I'm, I'm thinking maybe we can work out a compromise here by putting 200 plus. I, I, I think we've got to deal with the reality that, that, that the next town manager, the first number is going to be a two in my mind. And, and, and um, so I could see something doing 200 plus. That's the midpoint of the 180 to 220. And, and we're not going to know until we get the candidates in terms of what that is. So I, I know I'm familiar with a, um, a profile that you did in another community. I'm not going to compare ourselves directly to that community. Uh, earlier this year, we used 200 plus, And if you feel like you need to use a number, I'd be comfortable doing that and taking out the minus. Um, and that gets us to a midpoint here. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you, Mr. Lynch. Uh, I feel like I now have a better sense of the market, um, and that's why you're here. So, um, and, and understand that my prior comments were based on no, not having that information prior to this meeting, and that, that actually may have been helpful. Um, that said, here we are. Um, I think that's very understandable why we need to list a salary in some uh, venues to post the position. Um, and I think that I'm also comfortable with Mr. DeCourcy's proposal. Mr. Hurd? I mean, I, I think 200 plus or minus is fine too. Just, be, I mean, it get, makes it, I, my, it could be 50 bucks. <laughs> That's under 200,000. So it, it, I mean, I guess the, the range handicaps us a little more as I talk it through, but I'm much more comfortable with 200 than 220 plus or minus because as far as I'm concerned, 220 is just about the max because we all know there's other benefits that come along on top of what your salary is. So I think 220 would be the max that I'd want to see a new salary regardless of the candidate. Um, so 200 plus or minus is fine for me. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. And um, Ms. Mahan? And I'm um, certainly in agreement with that. And my last question, I promise. Um, the um, application deadline of January 13th, I'm just curious, it, and it's not a big deal, but uh, it has a 3 p.m. <laughs> cutoff time. <laughs> Is that because of um, our consultants prefer that? only because we go till four. Um, and and it's, it's no biggie either way. I'm just wondering if that, you know, it can stay three, I don't care, but I, to me, for some reason, I thought that would say 4 p.m. Is, is that a big deal to switch that? Not, not a big deal at all. We used to, we used to go to five, I think, but we, 
we switched it to three and it's it really doesn't i'll, I'll tell you right now it's really not going to matter because at 259 the resumes will be coming in and some will come in at 302. uh it's just people so, so somehow wait till the last minute so we try to get the a little bit earlier and but four o'clock is fine no that's fine and, and if you wanted to hang around not that you have to when we discuss opening the warrant and closing it um it used to only be a week it's supposed to be four weeks we give eight weeks yeah. and it's it's the same four people and i'm should it's not the same four people but it's the same four placeholders that still no matter what it could be 16 weeks um and that's yeah. okay that's that's the yeah. way it is so if that's okay with my colleagues i just for some reason the three yeah. the, the four is all right okay um i'd make a motion to approve the draft and make it a final um uh, statement for the job application for town manager with um the amendments um regarding the salary and the close time from 3 p.m to 4 p.m um uh, with a closing date of january 13 2023 at 4 p.m I'm seeing a second by Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mahan. Uh, I will certainly um, respect the views of the preponderance of my colleagues, but I, I, if I recall correctly, Mr. McCourt was suggesting that we say, set the salaries 200 plus and not 200 plus or minus. Is that right, Mr. DeCourcy? That, that, that was my suggestion, and there was a couple of comments to put the minus in. I personally, I'd prefer just to have the plus, but I think for consensus purposes, if they're the will of the rest of the board is to put the minus in. I don't feel that strongly about it, but thank you for asking about the clarification. Um, and I think I would like to, with the chair's indulgence, uh, kick it back to Mr. Lynch, because I think that he had an co early comment on that. Do you have advice for us, Mr. Lynch, on that point? Uh, no, uh, no, I, I it, it, the, the minus, I, I, I guess I would agree with uh, Mr. DeCourcy. If, if for the consensus here, as long as, it, I will say that as long as there's a two there, uh, that's going to help you get the candidates. Uh, if, if it turns out that you're getting, you know, that there's candidates that, um, you know, aren't as qualified, aren't as experienced, uh, that uh, you feel you can negotiate at a lower salary, uh, that, I guess, gives you that opportunity. But uh, this job is really going to require in all likelihood to get the experience level something a little bit higher than that. But it was, as was also pointed out, there are other uh, parts of the negotiations that, that go into this with other benefits that uh, uh, could be part of the whole package. Thank you, sir. And, but again, as we get, as we get farther along uh, to the actual selection and negotiations, uh, you know, we'll be there with you to provide you with all types of data and information about uh, what's happening in the marketplace so that you're uh, well prepared for any negotiations. Thank you. Thank you, Slanch. All right, you know, well, yeah, you know, um, this is easy for me to go along with me and uh, Bill. So I, um, I had a conversation uh, briefly with Mr. Lynch, I mean, about, well, actually it was his flarity, I mean, and so I understood where they were coming from. I think, I mean, the 200 plus or minus is a, is a good place. I mean, actually, Mr. Mahan, I thought here she was gonna be with the fact that it was a Friday, the 13th, I mean, and so, so, so the fact that, that um, they, they were going three o'clock to me meant that they were, they were the ones bringing in, receiving the applications, because as you very well know, we close at noon on Fridays. So on a motion by Ms. Mahan, um, um, to um, accept, make, oh, well, create, turn this draft into a final version with the um, stated amendments and, um, and a second by Mr. Helmuth, uh, Mr. Heim. Mr. Heard. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. I mean, so, so the second part of this discussion I mean, is the creation of the selection committee. I mean, and so, so at, you know, we have, a variety of formats I mean, that we can we can choose. I mean, uh, the consultants have recommended that we keep the size of the committee um, to seven to nine, and um, I think that's a, a good number. I mean, um, and it's really a matter of how we get there. I mean, uh, uh, and so um, we can have <clears throat> we could choose the seven members however we want. I mean, be my preferred my preference at this point would be, be for us to uh, choose. 
a member from the school committee, a member from town, and then the five of us, me, could uh, choose uh, members of the committee. And, and But if you choose yourself, me, then you can't choose uh, anyone else. I mean, uh, and, and so um, I, I know, I'm, I'm not sure if Mr. DeCourcy's position has changed, I mean, about him wanting to be I mean, on the committee. I mean, I certainly want to be on it. I mean, I, and I should say this is a screening committee. I call it the selection committee. I should say screening committee, and I'm sorry for that typo or that mis, misstatement in the, um, in the agenda. Um, I would love it if he were part of it, me, but I always, almost feel that by saying that, I've already put too much pressure on you, me, but, but I've enjoyed working with you in this capacity so far already, and I really would value your input on it, you know, but then um, there are other ways we can put together the screening committee, and if folks want, have suggestions for that, um, I welcome them. I mean, it'd be good if we could come to a conclusion tonight, but I think we could put it off until the 21st, but we really want to have this committee, I think, up I me mean, by the 13th, I me mean, so that you know, a week or so after we have those those applications, they can get to work. So um, that's what I'll say for now. I will ask uh, Mr. Lynch or, or Ms. Flaherty if they have anything else to say before I turn it over to the colleagues. Uh, no, I mean, I think that um, the, uh, I'll, I'll jump in, Sharon. I, I think that uh, the, the number of seven is a good one. Uh, you know, the, the purpose of this screening committee is, is and I, I think you're, uh, the, the differentiation between screening and selection uh, is significant. The purpose of this committee will be to simply take the applications, working with us, screen them down to a reasonable number that could be interviewed for the purposes of then screening it down further to the finalists that will be brought to the board. Uh, the, the, the purpose for these screening committees is that in Massachusetts, the open meeting law uh, does not allow the select board to uh, conduct these preliminary interviews in executive session. And candidates are only going to apply if they have some level of um, confidence that their uh, application will be kept confidential until they're selected as a finalist, not just a candidate. Uh, so that's why uh, screening committees exist uh, primarily, and they, um, you know, they, there's a, you can have a member uh, or so on the on the screening committee, but you can't have the entire board serving on the screening committee or a majority of the board serving on the screening committee, uh, and the the uh, board can't um, dominate the the screening committee. This is supposed to be separate to provide uh, assistance to the, the, the board in getting the candidate numbers down. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lynch. And so I'll now open up to my colleagues. Mr. H Mr. Hurt. So I just want to make sure I understand. So we're gonna ask the school committee to designate one of their members, have someone that will, who's gonna decide from the town, us as a board? That's a good question. I mean, and, um, I recommend Jill Harvey if she do it, but we'll, I mean, I think we'll have to have a discussion about that. Um, then you and Steve, and then yes. the, the remaining three of us pick anybody? Yes. Oh, interesting. Ms. <laughs> uh, Mahan? <clears throat> I didn't mean to flash peace at you, but peace anyways. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's peace be with you. Um, Thank you. I'm fine with that. Um, I want to see what the rest of my colleagues do. I just want to, for history's sake, and I don't have any strong feelings, and um, either way, it, it may be something that previous boards did that it was sort of the state of the times, and it's not necessarily a, a tool that we need right now, but um, in the previous town manager's searches from um, Mr. Marquis, Mr. Farrington, and then Mr. Sullivan to Mr. Chapdelaine. It got carried over and that was, and again, I don't have any strong feelings. I actually kind of spoke against it way, way, way back when the first time, so, but um, was that there was an understanding since the town manager position is um, under the direct purview an oversight of the select board um, 
sort of tantamount uh, top three uh, responsibilities as a select person. Some would say that there was always an understanding and agreement by the board, and I'd be interested in what my colleagues have to say, and I, I'm okay either way, but the previous three or four times that I've done this was that um, each the board member was allowed that if for some reason a candidate who applied um, whose name did not get passed on from the first round only uh, individual select person or select persons could advance that person and that that's been done in the the previous how many have I done have I done three or four I can't even think four, four? That, that that was carried you know that was done in the first um, and it was carried over um, and it's just been carried over I think just because of it's always been there before so I don't have any strong feelings of the way but I'd like to maybe clarify if you want to continue if my colleagues want to continue that with that if you don't that's fine too well I should know that the last one we only had one candidate apply so there was no screening committee <laughs> and Don Marquis was uh, that was a long time ago <laughs> That was before Diane was born. <laughs> 19, yeah, 1960, I was 1967, I think. Didn't yeah. vote for his replacement as a matter of fact. But anyway, so I don't know if my colleagues have any feelings. Do you want to continue that caveat or it's not needed? Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Corsi? Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I guess just a couple things. To follow up on your earlier comment, and Mr. Diggins and I have been working as a subcommittee with Mr. Lynch and, and Ms. Flaherty, so we've had some discussions about um, you know, what, what a committee could look like. And I think as long as my colleagues aren't interested in naming themselves as, as onto the committee, that maybe gives me a little bit more time to think about it. And I'll just be honest, my concern was on a search committee, if there are two members of the select board, and it can't be more than two members because it'd be a quorum, that we may have an outsized voice on the search committee and it, it, it may not be um, as productive for the for the other members so that that's what I'm dealing with individually but I think we're not naming the people tonight I can think about that a little bit more and talk to Mr. Diggins about that a little bit more but that would be my only hesitancy on that as as to, to Mrs. Mahan's um, point I, I actually was on the search committee screening committee for Brian Sullivan and that procedure was used and, and actually there was a issue I believe with a, a candidate who sent something in that um, did get pulled in later because it was an issue in terms of when the screening committee received that application or whether it was received or not and, and um, that seemed I, I, I as a member of the screening committee I was fine with the Board of Selectmen doing that at the time um, I also recall that at, at that time um, I think you would nominate Miss Kelly to, to, to be on that screening uh, committee those five of us we worked with Ms. Malloy and and um, you know I was comfortable with that with that format and I, with that understanding that somebody else might be pulled in because we understood at the end of the day it's the select board's decision who to hire um, so I personally don't I don't have an issue with that if the if the rest of the board is, is fine with that and I guess I would only ask um, ask the chair when are, when are you looking for us to identify the individuals at for the 21st uh, no, no, I, mean, I just want us to make a decision as to I mean, what the composition, the, the template composition of the board will be, I mean, other, other, other committee will be meaning that, I mean, will we have seven, will we have five, I mean, how we'll go about selecting them. So I'd like to have, if we have that decision done tonight, that'd be great. We could wait until the 21st, but then I'd like to have the, the members of the screening committee I mean, selected. A, by the first meeting, you know, um, in January, which is the ninth, I mean, um, we could fall back to the 23rd if we had to. I mean, but, but um, so did that answer your question, Mr. Corsi? Yeah, no, it does. And, and, and I thank, thank, thank you for that clarification. And I also, I, I'm fine with seven as, as the number. Um, and I, I've made my other points on, on, on the other two. So, I mean, at least for purposes of tonight, seven seems fine to me. I think there is a question in terms of the exact language is it school committee or it's designee or is it you know, how that how the town person is selected but i think i think for purposes of this evening um i think there's consensus that that seven seems to be a good number uh, mr helmuth thank you 
Um, I'd just like some clarity on what exactly the proposal uh, is taking shape is. Um, I think Mr. Corsi's idea about the school committee or designee is a good nuance to consider. One question I have is the rationale for a school committee member. Uh, I think very highly of our school committee. I don't believe that the select board had a, uh, was involved in the screening of the superintendent which doesn't mean that we can't do it that way, but I think that I'd, I'd like to have some visibility into the rationale uh, for asking them to do that. So that's one question I have. Uh, for the second slot, what we've talked about a town person. Does that mean a town employee or what, or, or is that just another open slot that would be jointly appointed? So if I, uh, so I am, Definitely thinking a town employee, I mean, probably along the lines of a, depart a department head, you know, okay. being someone you know is going to work closely okay. with the the town manager. I mean, um, and, and if you, you like, I can answer your first question. Oh, please, about, yeah, by all means, yeah. yeah. And so the, the I, I understand the, the the asymmetry, but I think that's because that's the way the town works. I mean, the the town manager does work. I mean, um, um, with. The, with the schools, you know, uh, I mean, and, and so I, mean, I understand they have a, a level of independence, I me, mean, but but we, through the town man, the, there is influence, I mean, from the town manager, I mean, with um, respect to what happens now uh, with the schools, even if it's not particularly large, I mean, so I think it'd be good, I mean, to um, have the schools committee um, have some input in the process. And, it's not the strongest argument, but but it's the argument that I feel comfortable with. Um, Mr. Mr. Corsi. Yeah, and just to maybe a follow-up point to what Mr. Helma said, and, and maybe we could ask Mr. Lynch as well, and, and going back to the search you conducted earlier this year in Watertown, I believe the Watertown superintendent of schools was on that initial screening committee or search committee, and, and, and maybe that's something between now and the 21st that rather than the school committee, we think about it as the superintendent or designee because the superintendent is really the individual working most closely with the town manager. But if, if Mr. Lynch, if I could ask you, um, you know, whether it's the search you um, participated in this year or other searches, um, do you see superintendent of schools being involved often on a screening committee or search committee? Uh, actually, we do. We, we, we've had that in a number of communities. The superintendent has participated um, or, or a member of the school committee. But uh, it's an interesting point that uh, in Watertown, it was a superintendent um, in, um, uh, I believe it was Ipswich that we just completed. They had the school superintendent. Uh, Bowen had the school superintendent. So it is, it is pretty common to uh, have that, similar to having a department head. Uh, someone that uh, sort of knows the uh, inner workings. Again, the, the goal here is to help narrow the search down to then move candidates onto the to the board uh, for their consideration. Thank, thank, thank you. I mean, I, I, I think I just know that, that the town manager and the superintendent have weekly meetings, there's a lot of contact, and that may be the way to go, but again, we don't have to decide that tonight, but I think it's it's, it makes sense to me that there should be a school presence on the screening committee, but I, 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 as we've talked it through and, and listening to tonight, I, I may lean more towards the superintendent or her designee, but I mean, I think it's, it's something for us to think about and come back um, with later this month. Mr. Helmut. Uh, thank you, I'm sold on that point. Oh, <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and I might have been incorrect, actually, in my earlier assertion that, that now that I think about it, it's possible that there was a select board member involved um, in, this, in the school search. So um, that's subject to, to correction in the future. Um, and then finally, my question is, it, do we need to decide, or it sounds like we do, if, if we will provide for any of ourselves to be on this or not through self-naming or through another process? Um, I know, I know that I think Mr. Diggins expressed a view on that. Um, and I'd be curious if my other colleagues who are more experienced than I have, have a view on the wisdom of that or, or, or not. I mean, I don't have any views on the wisdom of it. I mean, I, mean, I certainly have a view of the preference. I mean, so as I said, I mean, you know, I'm certainly going to uh, nominate myself um, to be on that screening committee. And I had also suggested another preference, I mean, but but um, it's really up to us to decide that. 
I, I will say that it is, there are, there are, um, there, many communities do have one or two members uh, that, that will serve on the committee. But again, once you go beyond two, then you get into a quorum of the board uh, and that uh, affects the open meeting law, uh, which affects the way the screening committee operates. Well, since there's silence, I mean, I'll, I'll add a couple other things. I, mean, I understand Mr. Corsi's concern about it, it, it having to be indicating a lot of weight of the select board on it, but I think that's also reflective I mean, of the fact that it really is the select board's decision. So I, I don't have a problem with us having being a high weight being on on the board, you know, and and even along with that, I'm fine with me allowing the select board or a select board member me to um, ask that someone else that the screening committee did not select and um, to be moved on to the next stage of the process, you know, because once again, it is a select board decision, and I think I mean, we. We five need to be as comfortable as possible I mean, with the candidates that we take on to the next step because those will be the ones from whom we choose. I see you, Mr. Hurd. No, I was just going to say, <clears throat> Attorney Heim had his hand up. I think he okay, couldn't see you. it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. I just want to be clear for people watching at home that essentially a preliminary screening committee can do the initial screening, an executive session. After that, you can't go into executive session with the preliminary screening committee, and the screening committee very specifically under this body can only have two select board members. So that's what folks are talking about. Um, you can't have more than two on the preliminary screening committee, and the preliminary screening committee can only do the first, essentially, cut to identify what other qualified applicants. Just so folks, again, watching at home are clear on what what we're talking about in terms of the dimensions of it. Thank you, Simon. Mr. Helmuth. Um, I have an qu operational question about Ms. Mahan's suggestion, which I, I, I think is actually a good idea. But just operationally, um, with respect to the open meeting law and that uh, constraints that Mr. Lynch and Mr. Heim um, suggested, how does that work that the select board would still have the ability to bring forth a, a candidate outside of the screening committee? Uh, process, but w w without getting into trouble on that front. I want to make sure that Mr. Lynch, uh, Mr. Helmuth, just so he and I are on the same page, has, I know you wanted to interject something. Do you mind if we By all means, go ahead, go ahead, please. If, if, is that referred to me? Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Uh, the, uh, I, I just an important point I think needs to be made, too, regarding the resumes that are received. The resumes that are received remain confidential only to the screening committee members. There aren't, these resumes are not distributed outside of the screening committee. They're, and so therefore, nobody knows who applied for the position other than the screening committee members. And it, it, it is a, uh, so I think that's, that's notable. If there's some, if there's some uh, understanding here that somehow the, the board is going to receive these, they, they will not, only the screening committee. Uh, the only ones that the only names that the screening committee sends on are those that they've determined to be the finalists, and that's in accordance with the. Uh, and your attorney will, will, I think, will back me up on this. The um, that's in accordance with the rulings of the uh, attorney general uh, with the open meeting law uh, process. And the, and the other part of that, just the other, just sort of concern if you will, regarding candidates, because again, I, I can't stress enough what a competitive market it is right now for town managers, hence our discussion on salary, uh, and also just getting people to apply for these jobs, um, is that uh, people are not going to apply if they don't think that they stand a good chance of getting at least to the finals and having a shot at the job. The concern I have is that if candidates can sort of be uh, put in place outside of the screening committee process, that's going to put a, that's going to put a, a, a freeze on candidates that are going to be applying for this job. All right. Mr. Diggins, man. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. You know, so I heard Mr. Hahn. Yeah, yes. Thank you. thank you, Mr. Diggins. So again, just to recap, 
the select board doesn't have to use a preliminary screening committee if it doesn't want to. But if it wants to have somebody go into executive session for the purposes of both maintaining the confidentiality of potential candidates and also giving the preliminary screening committee a little latitude to talk in an executive session about what they deem to be sort of a qualification under the parameters that you provided, um, you would have to convene a preliminary screening committee for the initial screening process. And I'll just, again, to be crystal clear, read the law for everyone. It's the purpose of executive session and a preliminary screening committee is to consider or interview applicants for employment um, or appointment by a preliminary screening committee if the chair declares that an open meeting will have a detrimental effect in obtaining qualified applicants. Provided, however, that this clause shall not apply to any meeting, including meetings of a preliminary screening committee, to consider and interview applicants who have passed a preliminary screening. So the preliminary screening committee can convene an executive session to look at resumes. They can have some interviews, including more than one round of interviews, potentially, in determining who is essentially a qualified applicant to be presented to the rest of the board. The difficulty in, I think what Mr. Lynch is saying, the difficulty both practically and legally, if you have resumes being submitted to the rest of the board outside of that, um, is whether or not the purpose of this executive session exists anymore. Because the idea is to keep confidential. I see Mr. Hurd, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hurd. Yeah, I guess, yes, I mean, if we kind of simplify this, the screening committee is a committee that puts forth a couple of candidates and the full board could say we don't like any of these candidates and not vote for them. And I think what, I mean, we we're talking about dis disseminating who applied through this screening committee. I think in reality what we're talking about is somebody that tells me, hey, I applied, and then we don't see the name put forth through the screening committee. That's on an open meeting law violation that some candidate told me that they applied for the job. And when we, uh, once we vote on this, regardless of whoever, I mean, there's nothing other than bad form, I guess, to, to stop any of us from saying, well, you know, I, I hear your candidates, but I want to nominate Ashley Meyer to be the next town manager. And I can do that, and I can, if I can convince three of my colleagues to, that that's the new town manager. So, I, I mean, I think we're looking at this in a vacuum of the screening committee, and like, oh, there must have been an open meeting law violation that they knew that this person applied. But, I mean, I think in reality that's how it works, and that's probably how it worked before. That being said, I would envision that we will rely on the judgment of our screening committee and most very likely select someone that the screening committee put forth. But, I mean, just as we're talking to simplify it, I, mean, I think we're kind of talking through hoops and ignoring the obvious. Thank you, Mr. Herger. Um, well, I hear everything, you know. It, I, Mr. Lynch, you know, if we, if we don't have me the option of moving someone um, that wasn't um, selected or, or chosen by the screening committee, it, well, let me rephrase the question. You said that if we do, it will make it harder to attract candidates. I mean, so, so I'm assuming if we don't, it makes it easier. But then what Mr. Hurd said is that he, he, we, we still have that option, I mean, even if we don't like formally say it. I mean, so, so I'm trying to understand that. I mean, if we don't state it, I mean, how is the detriment to the selection process uh, negated? Well, I think, and again, any candidates watching this meeting tonight, uh, or do you know that this this is a possibility that they may apply and that they may be someone who contacts a member of the board uh, down the road and gets their name put into nomination and uh, you know when we have for instance when we have internal candidates that are known to be candidates for the position 
it makes the search uh, very, very difficult uh, to get candidates because they assume that uh, the inside candidate has the advantage. Uh, and communities have gone through this where they lose three of their finalists, two or three of their finalists, because it's an internal candidate that that's comes to the, um, the forefront. If someone can be brought in outside of the process, uh, that politicizes that process and um, that scares candidates off. Right. Did I say Henry? I've never. I, I have to tell you, I I, I don't outside of um, outside of um, um, you know a couple cities that have uh, Plan E forms of government uh, that are highly political. Um, I, I've I've never seen. I don't know if I've seen a, a community that has gone this route of pulling someone in that hasn't gone through the process or wasn't uh, brought forward by the screening. All right, Mr. Hart. I guess what I was trying to say that I think will allay Ms. Mahan, I was trying to explain a potential mm -hmm. where Mrs. Mahan's suggestion could come into play. I don't think we should put it in writing anyway. It does, I think we should end the discussion and that's it. <laughs> it's just we understand that that is a possibility and I'm, it's a possibility in any town that's governed by a select board. And, any candidate applying should know that it, it's not. It's it, it can happen, but it is unlikely to happen. But we we're not going to put it down as part of our policy. It it just that can happen in any city or town. It's a search committee proffers three candidates and three select board members say, "Yeah, I don't like those three candidates," and you go back to the drawing board or you put somebody else up. I, I mean, I think. That's a risk that any candidate is going to have to take. I understand it's a competitive market. I think we put together a good package. I think this is a great town to be a town manager of. So I do anticipate that we'll attract some talent. So, I mean, I'm not worried about that. I think we will find a qualified town manager. But, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not advocating to put it in writing anywhere that we are anticipating doing that and if someone sees the meeting they see the meeting but so gotcha. Mr. Mahan? short and sweet totally agree with what Mr. Hart said <clears throat> and with all due respect this is the select boards um, process that we're overseeing that we're choosing um, for transparency and to continue with what we've done before to have a screening committee we've never put it in writing um, I can tell you the four, um, not counting the current town managers, but the four times I've gone through the process, we've gotten, th th that's sort of been a, a tacit or agreement or caveat, and we've never had a problem of attracting. If you want to consult our human resources director, Karen Malloy, the next time you talk to her and ask her what the previous searches were like, um, we always had anywhere from 20 to 40, 20 to 30 plus candidates in the initial round. Um, so as, as I said, Arlington, uh, if you really look throughout the Commonwealth, um, even with some cities, um, Arlington definitely is, for a town manager, uh, a very well sought after uh, position uh, because of the position that the town is in, because of the select board, because of the department heads, because of the schools. So. Um, if you, I guess we're not asking for that to be codified or put in writing. We're just going to continue with the past practice, and I, I think we should move on from there. Thank you, Mr. Helmut. How many candidates are we going to ask the the uh, screening committee to put forth? Has that been on the, on the table? Is that something we need to decide? I don't know. I'd recommend that you ask for three to four candidates. I'm sorry. Can you say again, Mr. Lynch? Three to four candidates. Three to four. Okay. Sounds good. I mean, it, 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 if I could, just it, just yes. by way of clarification, I know this is going back a little bit. Uh, you know, I think it's. I, I'm not sure how how, and, and I'm just providing this information so that there's a, a full understanding of uh, my experience in this area. You know, I, I've I've been in municipal government here in Massachusetts for 40 years. I'm I'm well aware of the uh, 
the managers uh, positions throughout the Commonwealth. And we've, we've now done 90 searches uh, over the last five years, six years. And uh, so we come in with some, some experience, quite a bit of experience in this area. Uh, so I just, I just want people to understand where we're, where we're, where I'm coming from, where we're coming from when we provide you with this information. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Okay. Well, I think we're at a consensus on seven, you know, and, and I think we're at a consensus be that we'll have being a member of the school committee or the superintendent and someone from, um, town staff, you know, and then um, the five of us uh, put up uh, you know, members for the selection committee, and then we can determine who it is of us um, that are on it. Um, Mr. Mr. Hurd. Um, I don't know if my colleagues are ready for this, but uh, I'll make a motion to establish a search committee of seven people, one the superintendent or a designee, one town employee, in one person each as suggested by each member of the select board with the understanding that no more than two can serve. Okay. Second. Second by Mrs. Mahan. You know, so, so we now have two the motions other, pending. Uh, Mr. Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Just a point of clarification, Mr. Hurd, you mentioned search committee. I think we're gonna call it a screening committee. Yeah. So yeah. with that. Screening committee. Okay. So amended. Thank you. And a second is by Ms. Mahan. Any other questions, comments? I, I, comments? We, just, we, we didn't really determine how we would select the second spot, but I'm, fi I'm fine with the motion, but it just, I don't know if that needs to be discussed tonight or decided. What's this, sorry, what's the second who, spot? Who will choose the second spot? The town employees. Before. So I think at our next meeting, when we proffer candidates, we'll all come in and say this is a town employee that we think is would be too best and convince each other mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah I mean, well, yeah this was hurt I mean that's a, that's a good idea I mean it was um, I didn't go that next step because I just didn't want to presume I mean, what we would determine how we would uh, vote on that I mean, but that's a, a good first idea and it's probably very likely what will happen you know so all right so any other questions? Um, Mr. Chair, just, just because my brain, I'm not functioning at 100%. Did we already vote on uh, the motion that I made and Mr. Helmuth's seconded of the January 13th? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I don't remember doing that. So if that's the case, do you have it down um, as chair that on this agenda item five, we have two separate votes? The initial vote by myself and seconded by Mr. Hurd, and then the second vote uh, regarding the screening committee made by Mr. Hurd and seconded by me. So we have two votes to take, right? Or did I fall asleep and we already took the first one? Uh, I'm not recalling, um, Ms. Meyer. So we have to take. We two we did take the first vote. We did. Yes. Okay, then we're all set. Sorry, I didn't cross. No problem. Thank you. No you problem. voted yes. <laughs> <laughs> And, and so, so then on this this second, so right now we have a, a motion by Mr. Hurd, and, and you seconded it, Ms. Mahan. Yes, oh, thank oh, you, Mr. Chair. All right. I mean, so I think we're ready for the vote. All right, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you. You know, so. On to the consent agenda, and uh, so we have the. Oh, actually, uh, Mr. Lynch and Ms. Flaherty, thank you very much. I mean, appreciate all your work on this. I mean, uh, I mean, very happy with the position statement, and it's been a pleasure so far working with you, and I'm sure it'll continue to be. Thank so, you very much. So we'll touch base soon. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you to the board, and we'll get uh, we'll get moving, getting this out on the street. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Take care. Good night. You know. Good night. So. Now on to the consent agenda, you know, item number six, minutes of meeting, minutes of the meetings, you know, the November 7, 2022 meeting and the November 21st, 2022 meeting. And number seven, a request a special one day beer and wine license for December 10th, 2022 at the Arlington Center for the Arts uh, private event with, um, uh, with um, Jane Byer. And so 
Can I get a motion? Move approval. A motion by Mr. Hearn. Second. And a second, second by Mr. Mr. Helmuth. Um, Mr. Hein. Oh, I have one question. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hein. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. I just have one question on um, the uh, consent agenda number seven. Just because I, I never recall seeing this, but on page five of the um, application, <clears throat> and this is for a gathering of approximately 30 um, people, um, I just never seen this before, and I don't know if we can just let it go the way it is, tighten it up a little or whatever, but it, where it says how will the excess alcohol beverages be disposed of. Traditionally in the past, um, whatever wholesaler or company brings it in takes it back. Um, but where it says any leftover alcohol will be distributed to the guests in small amounts and transported in the trunk of their car. Um, we've never done that before, approved that. Um, is it too late to, I mean, what I would think is the person who's going to be the tip server, um, and I can't anticipate for a party of 30 that there'd be a lot left. So I guess my question would be through you, Mr. Chair, either to town council. Um, I mean, at the very least, I'd like it to say if, if we are allowing them to dispense it in small amounts to their guests and to be transported in a trunk, that it says it will be secured or something like that. Or um, I don't know if town council or anyone can give me any guidance. Or may, am I overthinking this? I was actually just wondering how they are going to enforce that they put it in the trunk of their car. <laughs> What if they have an SUV? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Heim? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think the board can place a reasonable condition on it if you want to say that, um, you know, alcohol shall be uh, secured in a more specific way. I think you could. I think you could also say that, you know, you'll limit it to two drinks or three or however, whatever you want. If you want to be more specific, I think you can grant it with, you know, conditions that you're making on it if they, as long as they're reasonable. You could also direct them just to take it with them and not distribute it to guests if that's what you'd like to do. Yeah, I mean, and, hey, it looks like a party favor. But can, um, I don't know how my colleagues feel about this, but I'd like it to, if, if we approve this and just say that um, for the, the, any leftover alcohol will be secured by the tips server, um, Sarah Beyer, who also will not be drinking at the event um, and transported by her? Or am I just overthinking this? Should we just let no, that I, go? I think it's a good catch <laughs> yeah. on, the, on, the, on this. So. so can we do that? Yeah. Can, I, can I do that, Attorney Heim? Can I just yeah. say for how and when uh, leftover alcohol will be yeah. secured and transported by Ms. Sarah Beyer, period. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. With that change. So thank you. I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. And I, I had noticed that and for some reason I thought maybe I had seen it I mean, or, or that I knew that it was a possibility. I mean, so my question to you, Ms. Mahan, is, is the fact that uh, Officer Rateau signed off on it, does that mean that it is legal for that to be done and we're simply expressing a preference that it not be done? No, we're, we're, the per, we're the entity that gives the approval for alcohol at this town-owned facility, and we take the recommendations. Anyone can correct me on this if I'm stating incorrectly, but um, uh, it, the final vote is ours. I'm seeing nodding yeses to my left, but I think Mr. Yes, Hurt has his hand. I mean, I think where Mrs. Mahan's getting at is that we're responsible for how alcohol is distri distributed. And a bartender has to be tip certified. They have to make sure that somebody's not intoxicated when they give them alcohol. So if you hand somebody alcohol yeah. and they walk off not into the trunk of their car and into, you know, Woodmore Park or something and consume it, it just it seems very kind of wishy-washy on our part to say, all right, yeah, you know, whatever's left over, just hand it out and have a party in the streets. Not that I'm saying that this is what these applicants are going to do, but I think as a policy, we should say anyone, 
any alcohol left over should be secured and removed by whoever the tip certified bartender is. I'm fine with that, you know, so, all right, you know, so, so. Um, Sorry to the party goers that won't be walking away with the excess alcohol. New party favor, look at time. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. All Mr. right, thank you. Mr. Yes, time. Mr. Diggins, shall I take your welcome? Yes, please. Mr. Hurd. Yes. yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Also known as the Grinch, yes. <laughs> Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Nanisfo. All right. Thank you very much. Amen. And now on to the next item, appointments. And so an appointment to the Commission for Arts and Culture. We have Nicole Cuff, and I see Nicole is in as a panelist. Hi, Nicole. Hi. Thank you very much me for your willingness to be on the a commission on the Commission for Arts and Culture. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, thanks so much for having me today. Um, so I'm an acoustician, I'm an educator, an artist and a community volunteer. Um, in terms of my work as an acoustician, I design spaces to make sure that users have excellent speech intelligibility as well as excellent musical acoustics. I'm the K-12 market leader at my company, which means that I work closely with our marketing department to communicate our branding and K-12 message to clients. And I'm the face of public and independent school work at my firm. In terms of being an educator, I teach acoustics at Roger Williams University in the architecture school, and I've done that for the past three years. I'm an artist, and I'm involved in community groups with other artists in the Boston area, and I regularly support other friends' performances and recording media. I have a history of community volunteering with Little Brothers, Friends of the Elderly, Boston Cares, and Wingate. I would love to have the opportunity to serve Arlington and promote the ACAC mission and strengthen my town. I think of beloved small local performance spaces like Johnny D's and Riles and TT the Bears that closed pre-pandemic and I think about how the ACAC can provide even more performance opportunities for local artists to help make up for these venues closing. We can help strengthen the local community, music community in Arlington. I see more local performance opportunities coming up in areas farther outside the city like Lowell, Wakefield, Stoughton, and Melrose, and I'd like to be a positive agent for change to bring more performance opportunities to Arlington. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott. And so um, I turn to my colleagues. Mr. Hurd? Yep. I will move approval and just say thank you for your willingness to serve. I feel like we say this often, but not at every meeting. We're very, always taken aback by the quality of candidates that we have to serve on our local committees and how experienced and spot on experienced uh, the members of these committees are. So thank you again for stepping up to serve. I, miss, uh, I see Mr. Hellman and Mr. Corsi. So Mr. Corsi first. So Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion and I also want to Thank Ms. Cuff, and, and I was looking at a little bit of your background and, and even beyond what you have here. I understand that you actually performed at Symphony Hall and you were the uh, director of your, the cordial of yours, a cappella group at Boston <laughs> University, so it's always nice to have a fellow Terrier uh, in here as well, so uh, thank you. Go <laughs> Terrier! Mr. Mr. Helmuth? I'm good, thank you. All right. And, uh, so, uh, so yes, yes, I mean, uh, impressive, I mean, and, and the ACAC is just a really great organization. I mean, you, 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 I think you know what you're getting into, I mean, uh, and, and I mean that in, in the most positive way, I mean, and so we look forward to, to your contribution, I mean, and, and, um, and then uh, maybe someday we'll figure out how to put haiku to song, I mean, uh, uh, like <laughs> evolution. I could. Mm -hmm. So, uh, on a uh, motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. DeCourcy, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's unanimous. Thank vote. you very much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And next we have uh, an appointment to the Clean Energy Future Committee by uh, Amos Meeks. And, uh, so, I see Amos is in. And, uh, Mr. Meeks, want to tell us something about yourself? 
Hello. Uh, sure. Um, so, professionally, my background is in material science and applied physics. Um, I finished a PhD from Harvard in 2021. Um, but in terms of sort of climate and activism, um, I've been pretty involved uh, with things since high school. Um, most recently, in, and in particular in Arlington, I was um, I joined Sustainable Arlington in 2016. I was co-chair for um, about two years. Um, involved in a number of efforts there, um, including, I think, more recently in 2020, um, I was part of a group sort of spearheading an effort to pass a home rule petition uh, asking the state legislator to let us um, sort of create a bylaw that would prevent the addition of new fossil fuel infrastructure in new construction. Um, that passed town meeting pretty overwhelmingly um, and has since gone on to sort of inform the current uh, um, 10 town sort of pilot program that the state uh, has put together that we are trying to participate in. Um, so I'm excited to uh, join the CEFC. I've um, sort of been involved in, in collaboration with them in my work with Sustainable Arlington. Um, I think they've done uh, tremendous work and, and I think there's a lot more to do. Um, there's a lot coming up with uh, sort of the new stretch energy code. Um, that's been created um, and that then ties into also this um, fossil fuel infrastructure um, and then continuing to go on to, to uh, promote electrification and make Arlington as sort of uh, green and low carbon uh, as possible to get to our sort of um, net zero goals. Um, so thank you very much for, for the consideration and I'm looking forward to uh, getting to serve. Thank you, Mr. Meeks. Mr. Hellman. Thank you. I'd like to move approval. And as the uh, select board member who's fortunate to currently represent the board on the CEFC, um, I, I, I know that you will find it to be just an absolutely terrific group led by our very capable uh, town staff member and volunteers who have a tremendous wealth of knowledge. Looking at your resume, Dr. Meeks, I think that you are about to add to that uh, considerably, and we are very fortunate for you to step up. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm looking for a second. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Dorsey. Um, any comments, questions? All right. Well, um, Dr. Meeks, it, uh, it, I, it's the first time I've seen in an entry for a region on, on someone's resume. So it's been, a, it's been a long time since I've been to one of those, you know, back in maybe like the early 90s. Good to see they're, I guess, still going at least until 2017. You know, uh, so um, I expect nothing but the best from you, you know, because we, you're, you're a town meeting member from Precinct 3. Precinct City delivers, and I expect you to keep delivering. I mean, so, so, um, so, thank you very much, I mean, And so, on uh, motion being um, by by um, Mr. Helmuth, and a second by Mr. Corsi. Mr. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Corsi. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day. So we now move to open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall, be, shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to a presentation to present a concern or a request. And so do we have anyone queued yes, up for open forum? One, there's one right. hand raised at this time. Yeah. I'm going to promote them now. Great, thank you. Ms. Olapczyk, I see your audio is coming on. And let me just make sure that I have a clock and it's going over to the gallery view. Oh, I so can. You're going to give me a clock? This, I, can, this I can give you one. Yep. Hold on one second. Okay. Great. 
All right, Ms. Wolofchik. Hi, um, Beth Malofchak, uh Russell Street Town Meeting Member. I just wanted to um, acknowledge and thank the great effort that the town has made um, concerning uh, curating the tree canopy. I, I was happy to read the announcements this past week on all of the efforts. I know, I know um, because of my um, work um, uh, paying attention to the tree committee that they put a great deal of effort, volunteers there did in watering during the um, extreme heat that we had this summer. And I know how difficult it is to maintain the newly planted um, particularly bare root uh, saplings to get them to survive. So I just want to thank everyone on the tree committee and DPW um, and on your committee who support the efforts of these committees in uh, curating and protecting and um, increasing our tree canopy. It's very much appreciated. I did send you a letter, which I noticed in the uh, correspondence received. I appreciate that, that it was posted. And I would just like to encourage the select board to consider as a potential uh, perhaps Warren article that some committee could bring up that uh, any and when any town land is going to be repurposed that a protocol be established or a requirement be established that a tree inventory and an environmental impact statement must be done prior to uh, consideration of repurposing. So prior to any um, project progressing, that that first be established so that the interests of the community, the interests of Arlington needing its tree canopy for public health and defense in extreme heat and climate change um, be fully represented. So Mr. Chairman, thank you for this opportunity to speak during open forum. It's been a long evening, <laughs> I have a lot of work and I, um, I'll end there and uh, thank you very much. Have a good night. Anyone else, Ms. Meyer? No, that was it at this time. Great, Great. thank you. Yeah, so moving on uh, to item number 10, uh, election review 2022 and election preview of 2023, uh, Ms. Brazil. Right. Hello. All right, so it's fun to be here in person. Um, I'm going to um, just touch on a few things since the memo is fairly detailed. Uh, I just want to call out a few things. Um, we had three elections in 2022. Uh, things went very smoothly, um, even including uh, rolling out for September and November the new uh, electronic um, voter list, the whole pad check-in to the souped up iPad and printer. Um, and so that was um, a lot of fun and, and I think a great success. I've got a lot of election workers uh, saying they'll work uh, full day shifts now that the ending, the end of the night isn't quite so horrifying, um, counting manually the paper list. So I take that as a huge win to keep some of our most experienced people um, working the elections. Um, so, you know, each election has its story um, in, uh, and if sort of if you look at the numbers um, presented in the memo, um, the town election um, did have, um, you know, lower turnout than we like to see. It was not helped by the state um, not authorizing vote by mail. So it was only absentee, which is a very restrictive um, restriction. Um, so that certainly didn't help our numbers. Uh, in September, of just the confusion, um, I think all of the September primaries suffer from the fact that when you get the postcard from the state in July, it's very difficult for you to visualize that you're going to be on vacation the last two weeks of August, which is when I'm going to be mailing you your ballot. So that creates a lot of confusion, and, and so um, it's difficult for voters to navigate. I'm hoping we all get into a vote by rhythm, vote by mail rhythm over the next few elections, and that improves. Um, and then, you know, November had tire, high, higher turnout than I think the secretary was predicting. Things went very smoothly um, in Arlington. Um, and I was also really excited to see how much, um, how well vote by mail worked, um, high participation, and a high return rate. Um, we do track how many ballots we mail, but we also track how many we get back that we mailed. 
and getting back, you know, most of the ballots that we mailed um, was great. Only 12% were not returned, um, and that's a really great statistic. It was 30% in September, um, and that's, you know, feels a little more wasteful. Um, so I'm, I was very excited. Um, and then the last thing is if you look at the chart, the right-hand side, um, the percentages sort of for each election add up to 100, and what you see is that it's about a 50-50 split uh, in person and by mail, and we'll be keeping an eye on that. Um, but that's sort of a, an interesting statistic, and it shows that people really do like um, voting by mail, and it's a great alternative to be able to offer. So looking ahead to 2023, um, there are several things um, that I'll be coming back in <clears throat> January and February to ask the select board to vote on. Um, tonight, I would like to just um, confirm the date of the town election in April. I know the default date in the bylaw is always the first Saturday. Um, the board has the right to change that. Um, I don't see a reason um, why you would want to change it, but I suppose I'd like to hear that from the board as well um, so that we can all sort of agree on the date of the election and I can move forward. Um, the, uh, we have, uh, we'll have two members of the select board uh, on the ballot, three school committee, one town clerk, and one member of the board of assessors. I've started the process now of looking at uh, vacancies on town meeting. Um, of course, we don't really know open seats on town meeting until we get past the deadline for current town meeting members to uh, re-up. Um, but we do have a few seats um, available, and so I'll be getting information out to the public about uh, how to run for town meeting so we can encourage people to jump in and do that. Um, State law requires now that we offer vote by mail unless the select board votes to opt out. Um, although it is optional, I strongly believe that we should do a postcard mailing to every registered voter, so I am planning to do that. Um, uh, so I'm planning to do that in late January. Uh, so that's sort of how long you all would have <clears throat> were you to decide that you wanted to vote to opt out. Um, State law allows us to opt in to early voting in person for local elections now, and I am planning to offer that at least on a limited scale. You may remember that the Election Modernization Committee recommended to town meeting, which approved it, a plan to do th three days of early voting um, prior to a, uh, a local election or town elections. Um, my current vision is it would be Wednesday, Saturday, <clears throat> Wednesday, and then the Saturday election, so that that's kind of easy um, to stick in people's heads and we get as close to the election as we can before we need to stop um, and actually get ready for the election. Um, and I, I think it's important, and the reason for doing the postcard mailing and offering in-person early voting is so that as much as possible, all elections are conducted exactly the same way. The dates and deadlines will vary based on um, which election it is, but I want voters to sort of get that rhythm and that understanding about how they best can exercise their choices and their options for how to vote. Uh, and then the final uh, vote I'll ask you to take will be to specifically authorize um, the dates for early voting and the police details. Um, those are all <clears throat> things that you'll have to do. Um, so that's you know, sort of my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about elections. So, Hurt? Um, so, did, sorry if I was confused. Um, are you looking for any of these motions tonight? Nope. I mean, I mean, I, I'd be happy to move that we set the date for our annual town election April 1st, 2023. Sure, I think we do have that as a placeholder on the agenda, so you have a, a place to discuss okay. it. Yep. I won't leave until we finish that agenda item. Well, I retract my motion. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else? Mrs. Mahat. <clears throat> um, was that a motion to receive, Mr. Hurd? Sorry, second. Motion to receive. 
Okay, I'll second Mr. Hurd's motion to receive. And I, I just have one question and to you, Mr. Chair. Um, and it could be that the state law has changed and I haven't paid attention, but traditionally in the past, when we has, um, went around to some of the polls, not all of the polls, saw new workers, so mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> it's much appreciated. I know how, how difficult that job is um, to fill. Um, just about all of them don't do it for the money, so yep. they do it for the civic engagement and, and mm -hmm. participation. But I had it in my head that whenever we have new election workers, the names are forwarded to the select board. Yep. And we has that been, because I don't, I don't recall seeing them for like a year or two now, and I know we've had new people. Yep. Has the state law changed, or are we behind? Do we need to do we, that and play catch up? Both are true. I am behind in doing that, okay. and state law has made it. Uh, much more clear that when you get to within a few weeks of the election, the town clerk just needs to get it done. Uh, <laughs> um, but I do, need, I do want to come back and have everyone formally appointed, and, and I've discussed no, with no, if you could, in my Ms. Maher. Reason, yeah, I'm thinking, I, just add that to the like list. It's been two years, yep. maybe three. Yep, so, absolutely. Um, I don't want someone to say, yes, we have that latitude, because an election's yep. coming up and they say, well, it hasn't been three, it's been yep. three years. Absolutely. So, so we'll, so play we'll catch do that. up on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Yep. And I And I apologize. No, that's a I very should, good should question. should have caught it sooner. It's yep. Mine. Okay, thank you. Mr. Helmet. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk, for your patience waiting mm -hmm. tonight and for your work through these. As you say, each election has a story and each of these did. Um, and, you know, hats off to you and to your team for these going well. You've had a lot flying at you. Things have been changing on the ground, uh, and your adaptation to that has been exemplary and has served the, the uh, residents of the town really well. Just one question. How are we doing with people who are returning their ballots by mail with respect to technical errors, like failing to sign the envelope, and uh, you know, it can give us an idea of how often that's happening, and is there an opportunity if those are flagged for, do you reach out to voters for them to remedy that? Kind of how does that work? What's our um, yes, as much as possible. Um, you know, sort of in the early going, we, we definitely contact them, um, mail them a second ballot um, with a rejection letter and explain you know, what they did wrong um, and what they need to do to fix it. Um, as you get closer to the election, that becomes less and less practical, um, in which case we get, we get a lot of calls and track my ballot is updated daily and that helps people understand they can say well, you know why was my ballot rejected what are my options and then at that point you know they were usually in the middle of early voting um, and uh, and then of course you know they can always vote on election day um, so we work with voters um, there's there's always some it wasn't a particularly high number in this election I think people are are getting better thank you yep Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you, Ms. Brazil, for the the the, um, the report here. It's very interesting in terms of seeing the trends. And, and just one question on, and I'm happy to see that the percentage went down dramatically between the, the primary and the general election from 30 percent to 12 percent for ballots or people that requested ballots and, and um, they, they weren't returned. Just wondering if you have it, and this is more for the September primary, maybe of the 30 percent, do you know what percent of those people actually showed up to vote? Um, or was it that's because it's about 2,300 ballots that wouldn't mm -hmm. have been returned. Um, and I don't know if you have that information. I can ask you for it after the meeting. Yeah, I'm not. I'll have to figure out if there's a way to get that information out of the database. It's not an obvious um, answer. That it's not a standard report. But there may be a sort of a back-end way to look at that. Um, I do think in September, the, a lot of the non-returned ballots just didn't get to the voters, um, is my best guess. Um, I think there's a lot of confusion with mail forwarding um, in August. There's a lot of, uh, I think there were a lot of days where um, the regular mail carrier is not there and it takes longer, um, you know, they're on vacation as well. So, I mean, I just think late August is an awkward time in general to be voting in, by mail. Um, and I think that's really sure. what okay. we learned. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you, um, Ms. Brazel. And, uh, my, um, you said something earlier about how um, there was something about the process being that 
made the election workers happy with the way the evening ended. And what was that? So the, um, the old way to end the election night was to take the paper voter list that, where all the names had been crossed off and to manually count and add up the total number of voters. Um, and it's very difficult to get that accurate. And in a perfect world, you want that number of voters checked in to match the number of voters, uh, number of ballots you have in the tabulator. Um, the poll pads, um, just it's a click of a button. Um, and you run the summary report, and then, um, and then you know exactly how many voters were checked in on the poll pad. And so it's, it's much more efficient. And it automatically, for a primary, does the breakdown by party. Um, and so you know, it increases speed and accuracy um, at the end of the night, which is a great blessing. I, I just missed the, what was it that allowed that to be done um, more easily. Thank you. And um, my other question is, I mean, how many, um, do you have a sense of how many people um, get their ballots, return their ballots late, like they put their, they, they mail their ballots on that day, you know, um, as opposed to having them in to us by 8 o'clock? It's, it's not a whole lot. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's kind of screwy the way the state tracks it. Um, so I don't, I don't really have a totally good numbers for that, um, but it isn't, there are, I mean, yes, it's, it's of, the val of the ballots, you know, sort of, those are, the problem is they're rejected rather than um, not returned um, because they arrived late. And so it's sort of a different report um, and then the, uh, the apples and the oranges are, are tricky to track. But that's a good statistic to try and track over time, so I'll, I will add that to the yeah. list. Yep. No matter whether it's a big enough amount, well, we want to try and get everyone to vote. Of course. Um, Popularly, I mean, and so I mean, it's a, it's a little bit. I mean, it's not our fault that the law is as it is. I mean, you know, uh, but but to the extent we can, you know, make the effort to educate people better. I mean, so mm -hmm. that they, you know, uh, but if it's not a huge problem. Then it doesn't require like a emergency response, for lack of a better phrase. I mean, so, yeah. so thank you for that. You know, so so um, so anything that um, you you need from us tonight? I mean, this is kind of like a repeat of what Mr. Hurt asked. I mean, you know. No, uh, other than um, for the right the election date. Yeah, the election date, um, and that's all I need um, for elections. Okay, great, great. So, yep. um, uh, so on a motion to receive by Mr. Hurd and a second by Ms. Mahan, uh, any other questions or concerns? All righty, Mr. Hahn. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hellman. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's yes. unanimous vote. Great, you know, so, so, you know, so next on the agenda uh, is the presentation of the clown, town clerk study, you know, so um, since, yeah, I mean, since you're going to hang around for item 12, we'll just go in order, I mean, so, so we, we, we received the, the study, I mean, I probably at this point, like six weeks ago, uh, uh, it was a good read then, it was a good reread, you know, uh, this weekend, you know, and so um, I think we're pretty well versed in it. So maybe something brief and we can um, mm -hmm. entertain. Um, uh. Yep, absolutely. I will just touch on um, just a few things that really sort of uh, stood out for me. So I asked for the study uh, for two um, sort of broad reasons. One is to um, sort of, I think it's good to evaluate whether um, we've sort of, we in Arlington have uh, the job description for the town clerk right. Um, and whether we want to make any changes to how we distribute uh, the job duties. Um, and then, of course, the second question is whether we want to convert the position from elected to appointed. Um, so pages 6 and 12 have, you know, that very helpful summary of the findings, um, so I'm certainly not going to um, read them out loud. Uh, findings 1, 2, and 3 speak generally about the complex nature of a job like mine where all of the duties are spelled out in state law and regulation. Um, I think it's interesting that the select board under the current election law has to take so many votes um, around elections. That's sort of a trend that, um, that we're seeing in the way they're writing the election laws now. Um, and I, I will note that I do read 
uh, sections of state law uh, nearly daily, and I found this statistic in the report fascinating. Uh, 451 different sections found in 73 <coughs> chapters in state law apply to my job. So it's, it's, um, it's a substantial uh, issue, uh, you know, sort of facing town clerks. Findings four through six, um, talk a little more about the comparisons to the communities that they looked at in the study. Um, more than two-thirds of the 34 communities uh, studied have appointed clerks, and that trend to appointed clerks um, has sort of been spreading across the state. It is more common in communities of a similar size to Arlington to have an appointed clerk. Um, and no community that has converted the position has sought to undo that change later. Findings 7, 8, and 9 talk a little bit about the best practices that are found uh, sort of uh, in nearly all communities across the state. The first two are not currently true in Arlington. Um, and I, uh, for finding number 9, I have now taken over uh, complete management of election workers. Um, so now we're on to the findings that are specific to Arlington, summarized on page 12. Findings 11 and 12 talk about the challenge of using elections as a performance review. Um, it is rare to challenge a sitting clerk. Usually, um, you know, since 1975, that's happened in Arlington when a clerk retires and then multiple candidates run for the seat. Um, a lot of the work that town clerks do isn't visible to residents, and so candidates are talking about things during their campaigns that are fairly abstract um, to most people. Findings 13 through 15 come out of interviews with officials, and so um, they're fairly subjective, um, but obviously specific to Arlington. And finding 17 notes two areas that are commonly managed by town clerks, um, and um, so, you know, focusing on the first question of reevaluating the job expectations Arlington has for its clerk, I just find the study very, um, very helpful. Uh, I am not looking to take on public records requests, but I have thought about ways that we might be able to improve the coordination of agendas and some of the open meeting law <clears throat> requirements. It's not in the study specifically, but um, illustrating similar issues, I would like to take a look at conflict of interest law compliance and um, committee appointments. I know committee appointments are being looked at in the context of the equity audit, and I do think that um, better records and a way of sharing them between my office and the appointing authorities could make some improvements. Um, and so I'm excited to sort of see the results of the equity audit and continue that conversation. Um, the question about appointing a clerk is really for the select board um, to start. I think Arlington would be better served by having an appointed clerk, uh, one who was sort of fully integrated um, with town hall. A clerk working alone can't really make complex things happen. Um, and an elected clerk can choose not to take on specific tasks that are common um, to the job descriptions in most towns. So. Um, that's just not a good way to run a department or an election. Um, so I am recommending tonight that the select board put forward a <clears throat> warrant article and then town meeting will vote whether to put that question to the voters uh, on a ballot question a year later. Um, so that's my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Uh, so uh, turn to my colleagues, questions, comments. Ms. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, <clears throat> and thank you, Madam Town Clerk, for sure. um, all this information that you put together along with um, the Collins group. Mm -hmm. Didn't have it on the first page. Um, is it in here, and if I missed it, I apologize. I usually pride myself on reading every word. I'm just having trouble <laughs> retaining everything lately. Um, but that will correct itself. Uh, but I know you said of... Uh, I think you said two-thirds of the uh, community surveyed have appointed clerks. Um, of the 34 communities, 22 of which have appointed clerks that were surveyed somewhere in this report, what cities and towns those were, I mm -hmm. missed it. What page is that? I think, uh, so the statistic is 
sorry. The finding on page um, eight and nine. Yep, I have that. Yep, and then I think they're the charts, the appendix in the back um, breaks out. Okay, so I have to go through with the A yeah. and the E. But how do I know which 34 were used? Um, so I think the, the last page, um, oh, which are, the, which are the specific municipalities? Um, I'm sure they're listed. Um, you know what? You can get that to me. Yeah, can get it's that pages to me 19 and tw it's, it looks like pages 19 and 20 call out a lot of that. Um, so, yeah. But we can, I can get you a list of exactly which yeah. Um, yeah. communities. Pages. Sure. Yeah. I'm, well, well, of the third, I, I mean, I see yep. like nine or ten there, but there were 34 four surveys. So I'm just, yep. just curious what they were, um, just in case I want to use them for future comparisons. But sure. then I also noted that um, this report noted that 153 of the 351 communities have um, appointed clerks. So whereas the 22 of the 34 surveyed have appointed clerks for two-thirds, the actual number of the total 351 of 153, I'm terrible at math, is like 32, 33 percent, and I can be corrected on my math, that um, have appointed clerk, meaning the remaining, um, which is the larger number, um, have elected. So. Um, I'm, I'm not going to make a motion from myself because I'm like the appointed clerk. It's sort of been something that's, uh, I won't say since I started on the board in 1999, but probably about a decade after that. It, it, it's come up in various forms, and um, I'm not saying that it's something that shouldn't be considered. And, um, and, and, and am I correct that if you wanted to, as town clerk, you could uh, submit the Warren article to go to town meeting or no? I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I do know the select board has traditionally done um, the conversion articles. I, Mr. Chairman, yes, please. I think it's likely that the town clerk could request a warrant article as an elected official. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, we've had warrant articles in the past submitted by the town treasurer and other folks who um, are, are elected. Um, obviously, it would still be a matter that would be before the select board for hearing. So I, mean, I like that route that we've kind of done before. So mm -hmm. um, I'll get back to you on what those other 34. But sure. just, just what I have which is here from the, the Collins Center for Public Management. I now see their name. I should have kept that page open. Um, the vast majority have um, elected town clerks, and um, that's something that I'd, I'm just one person would like to consider on with. So um, and, uh, I'd be happy to also move receipt of... Um, this report from the town clerk in, in the uh, College Center for Public Management. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Hellman. Thank you. I'd happily second the motion for receipt and offer my appreciation for the report. I think it's really thoughtful. Um, I think it makes some compelling points that the job of the clerk has changed a lot. It is a lot more complicated with the recent changes, the very positive changes in election law. Um, I think it is a more professionalized position than it used to be. So I welcome the discussion. I think that we should have it. Um, and I look forward to listening carefully to people with different points of view on the merits. Um, and I think that, you know, I agree with Mrs. Mahan, I think it'll be good to dig into 34 municipalities. You know, the Commonwealth has 351 municipalities, I believe, mm -hmm. and they're all really, really different. Some of them are really, really tiny. <laughs> Some of them are like Boston. Um, and um, so for me, the important thing that I will think about as a select board member, and I hope that my town meeting colleagues would think about if we have an article, is what's the apples to apples comparison here? You know, what's the best way, what's the best yardstick? And I don't know the answer to that. I think the report has, has a point of view, and I look forward to digging into that and having future discussions with you and with others about it. But I think this is a really good starting point for that discussion, and I think we'll have a good one. Thank you, Ms. Helmuth. Is that a hand, Mr. Hurd? Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I think the report certainly makes a compelling case, and I think it, this is a 
something that's been talked about for more than a few years. So, I mean, I think this will at least warrant moving it forward to a town meeting to talk about and see what town meeting thinks. And then ultimately it has to go to the residents anyways. So there's been there's plenty of public input and discussion before we get to that point. But again, I think the, the report is compelling to that point. But to Mrs. Mahan's point, there is counterpoints to any any point that gets put before, put before us. So I look forward to the discussion. Thank you, sir, Mr. Corsi. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I, and I, I look forward to the discussion as well. And and um, I, I, I found the the report interesting on on a number of the different findings. And I think even before we get there, I. I think it would be helpful, and this isn't whether the, the, the appointed elected question, but on the public records access officer, that I found very interesting because the majority of other communities, the clerk's office is, is the access officer. And in talking to Mr. Feeney, um, we receive about 600 public records requests per year, and he's coordinating all of them. And, and a lot of them he needs to coordinate between different departments. But I, I'd like to see in the short term and I'm sure there's dialogue because I know you're talking to different people in town hall, just in terms of is there a way that that can be, that that, that burden on him, frankly, can be <laughs> allocated and, and, and what's the best way to do it because we get a number of those requests. And I, th I think from my understanding, unless it's a request that has to do with the clerk's office, he's coordinating um, those responses. And I did find it interesting in the posting of the meeting agendas, I, I think from everything I've heard, it seems like committees and um, various groups that are posting meetings are doing it on their own. I think you're overseeing that or, or checking to make sure things are posted as opposed to just putting it on the bulletin board. I, I don't, you, you're shaking your head. I don't know if that, that's an area that, that it probably needs more um, coordination maybe as well. Yes. Um. Do you want me to answer briefly, yes, Mr. Diggins? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so yeah, it is It is complex. Um, I, I certainly understand the reasons why Arlington moved to a, I'll call it a distributed system, where uh, you know, staff liaisons um, facilitate the posting for the committees that they support. Um, uh, and then we do post uh, paper agendas on the bulletin board. I'm fairly sure, however, that Arlington took a vote and that the uh, online agenda is the one that counts. Um, so the paper, the paper version that my office, you know, facilitates by stamping, isn't the official legal version, and that's where it starts to just get muddy. And that's the muddiness I dislike. And so, um, you know, that's part of what I want to look at, um, and you know, make sure that we've got a robust system that um, that we understand, and that um, I can do everything I can to support. Um, compliance. Okay, thank you. And, and just a, an aside on uh, footnote two, when you referenced the 451 different sections, I was thinking that's going to be a very long footnote, but I was happy to see it's it's just a reference of where they're accumulated. Uh, yep. So, <laughs> uh, thank you. Of course. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Yes, I was thinking about the agenda um, aspect too, because me, 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 when I have to. Um, because it's the committees that I work on agendas for, I mean, usually go through planning. I always feel badly in asking planning, you know, to, to post the agenda because we know how busy they are. I kind of feel that there are other things that they can do, they can do uh, 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 and not that it's not, not that the clerk couldn't do that also, not hard that the clerk doesn't have other things to do with his or her time. I, mean, I think it would be good if it was just one person that was uh, responsible for for doing it all. You know, and so I mean, even if it, even if nothing changes, would that be something that could be pulled into the clerk's office? I mean, you can. Yeah, I mean, you could pull anything in. Um, it, it would be a lot of work if we're including. Um, right now, it's distributed, so there are you know like twelve different people um, who are going through all the steps to get it up um, on the website. Um, you know, sort of the back end for the websites, a tad um, persnickety. 
Um, so it would be, if we were to move it into the clerk's office, I would recommend that we um, contemplate um, different ways of doing it. The towns that do it um, tend to have the official version that's posted on the website is a scan of a document with a date stamp. That creates problems, having talked with uh, Joan Roman, our public information officer with ADA compliance. So this is a extremely messy and complicated problem to solve, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to look at it and find ways to do it better, which is my goal. Right, right, right. I mean, that technical thing seems, the technical aspect though seems like it will be the case regardless of whether it's elected or not, it's really a matter of figuring out how to do it. I was really just trying to understand if we have the resources now, I mean, if we didn't change the position to an appointed position, you know, to, to pull that function into the clerk's office. Um, and so I'm going to ask the question again, do we have the resources or do we have to get more resources? We might need, um, we might need another staff person or, you know, I, I don't know if it'd be a full FTE, but I'm not sure I could do that on top of what we do now, but until you look at sort of where the efficiencies are, um, that's yeah. tough to say. Gotcha, gotcha. And so um, is there any sense of how much being the appointed clerks are paid? Um, I don't have that data. I mean, there, there are um, salary surveys that are done and um, I can certainly uh, get them from the Mass Town Clerks Association um, with current numbers. Um, yeah. Do we have it, a sense? Um, I'm, I am underpaid in comparison to appointed clerks, so. Okay, all right, all right, all right, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. So, well, look, I mean, um, I think the report's compelling, as Mr. Hurd said. You know, I look forward to discussion because I really like to see the counter arguments, I mean, if, if there's a counter argument that can change how I feel about, you know, where this report is headed, I mean, that's gonna be a powerful counter argument. I'll learn a lot. Uh, from it, you know, so, so, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, wow, it's a really eye-opener, I mean, the only reason my eyes weren't open even more is because I was interviewed, one of the people that was interviewed, and so I got a real sense of, like, the, the issues that we have with the elected position, you know, man, and kind of with me, I'm pro, I'm pro-democracy, I'm all about elections, I just really think that we need I mean, there be some, some kind of like training or something for candidates, you know, so that we kind of you know, like increase the quality of candidates. And, and, and I say that as someone, you know, who ran for select board and it's like, I, I could have benefited me from, from some, some, some like kind of training beforehand or something. Uh, uh, and, and so, so, um, so, so yeah, I um, mean, um, so, so, yes, this is such an important position to be that I think the, we need to make sure that we have the highest caliber person in the position, you know, and I think we get that with the point. Because certainly when we look at the people that we appoint to commissions, I mean, we really make sure that they are qualified for the commission, I mean, and so I'd like to make sure that we have a really qualified clerk. And you know? so so thank you very much for this, you know, and you know, we'll be um we'll be back, I mean, to deal with this one way or another, um, sooner rather than later. You thank know? you very so, much. Uh, so on a motion to receive by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Helmuth. Um, any other questions, con concerns? All righty, uh, Mr. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I keep stepping on you, Mr. Um, Heim. Yeah. Uh, so uh, next on the agenda, is let me pull it up. Sorry, um, I think it's the vote on the election day or determine the date of the election. And, uh, <laughs> yes, vote of um, the 23, 2023 annual town election. Um, so, Mr. Heim, uh, Mr. Chair, I think that the board's familiar with the uh, process and the legal parameters. If the board has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Mr. Mr. Hart. I'd like to motion to set the annual town election for April 1st, 2023. Mr. Helmuth? I feel like I'm in school. Second. <laughs> All righty. You know, so any questions, comments? 8 to 8. Just oh, from yeah, it's 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah. 
in accordance with the bylaw. And I second that change. Clarification. All right. All right. So on a motion to set the election date for April 1st from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Meaning by Mr. Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Helmuth. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. That's a unanimous vote. Great. Great. Moving right along now to opening the town warrant. And uh, so uh, for annual town meeting 2023, Mr. Mr. Heim? Thank you, Mr. Diggins. You all have my memo. You all have done this uh, several times in the past, at a minimum. Um, the proposal before you is to open the town warrant this Friday, uh, December 9th, and to have it close the, sorry, why is my computer Friday, freezing the up the 27th of January. The 27th of January, all in accordance with the town's bylaw. Uh, the board will note that the notice of your intent to open the warrant has already been posted in compliance with the bylaw. The timing this year was a little funky, so it was posted at um, um, different municipal locations around town. Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to move that uh, we, um, in accordance with the law in the five days um, preamble to it, that we open the warrant on Friday, December 9, 2022, and it shall remain open and close on Friday, January 27, 2023. May I just one thing? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, would uh, Mrs. Mahan be amenable to also just standing at the town meeting will commence its business on April 24th, 2023? Oh, can I do that in the same vote? Okay. And, and that, as Mr. Attorney Heim has stated, that town meeting will start the fourth Monday in April, April 24th, 2023, in accordance with the bylaws for start time. Mr. DeCourcy. Second. Any questions, comments? Okay, and on a motion by Ms. Han and a second by Mr. Corsi, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Thank Mr. You. Diggins? Yes. Stand and spoke. Great. Thank you. And so, moving right along, item 14 discussion, increased engagement with the Arlington Tree Committee. And so, that's me. So, I. I had a preliminary conversation with um, my colleague, Mr. Helmuth, you know, who is uh, currently is on to the tree committee. Being, and and um, we, what I would like to do is first off, get in, an update in, on um, what's been going on um, with trees since we developed a tree management plan. And I, I'm impressed with the plan, you know, and my understanding is that the goal was to have a net increase of 100 trees per year um, uh, in order to try to get us back to the amount, the level of tree canopy that we had in maybe like 19, well, I guess it was like 10 or 15 years before um, the tree management plan went into effect. There was understanding that we couldn't we increase our tree canopy as it was like 40 or 50 years ago, but we're at least gonna try you know, to get back to where we were like about 20 years ago. Uh, and, and so it'd be interesting to see where we are um, but more so, I mean, I'd like for us, the town, to really have a conversation I mean, about how we want to deal with the conflict often between trees in, and other things, I mean, be they in uh, the Veterans Memorial Park or um, development. I mean, there's only so much we can do. I mean, right now, Article 16, I mean, um, or I forget, well, there's a, a bylaw, I think it's number 16, that handles I mean, what we do with trees with, um, in the, the, set, the setback. And, uh, uh, but it, if someone you know, decides to cut down a bunch of trees in the backyard, there's really not much we can, not much we really can do about it. I mean, if um, uh, a developer comes along and wants to uh, do a development and that involves ch cutting down some trees, well, we, there's a limit to what we can do. I mean, I mean, I think there should be a limit to what we want to do. But if we as a community I mean, really want to see more trees, I mean, then then we can do that. I mean, uh, we just have to pay for it. I mean, um, and, and I think it will be good for the community to decide I mean, well, what is it that we want to do when it comes to maintaining trees or increasing trees and also achieving uh, our other goals. I mean, so 
What I am coming to you all to do is to ask the uh, permission is not quite the right word, but to, to, to get a sense from you how you feel about me going to the tree committee meeting and engaging them more on this issue meeting. And I'm not going to be replacing Mr. Helmuth uh, on the committee. I would just be uh, interacting with them uh, more. Uh, and so they would get two select board members um, working with them because this is important meeting. And so, so that's the purpose of the discussion. I'll open it up for questions. Comments, concerns? Good. So are you asking us to comment on you talk, talking to the tree committee? Yes. Yes, I mean. But with and, no and, action, and, specific action items, correct? No, it's more so to, well, for, well, one thing I will ask them to do is to, um, and perhaps it would be the tree warden, is to give us an update in, on what has happened um, since we initiated a tree maintenance plan. I mean, so that would be one action that would come out of this. You know, um, and beyond that, it would just be to have a conversation to understand a, what their approach is, what their thinking is with respect to creating, I don't want to say a policy because that's perhaps a strong word, but having uh developing a way to have a conversation with the town about how we want to handle increasing our tree canopy or maintaining it in when we also want to do development yeah, i guess that's a longer conversation <laughs> um yeah i mean i think i certainly understand where you're coming from. Um, Arlington is recognized for its tree canopy, its urban coverage, and it's our immense efforts that we've been doing over the past couple of years to increase tree canopy. And I think, as you said, there's limits to things that we can do. And I think people recognize that some more than others. Um, so, I mean, I think we are on the right track. I think we do very, very, very well um, maintaining our current tree canopy and in our efforts to replenish tree canopy. So, so I guess I don't know what, <laughs> I mean, if there's more we can do, we're open to suggestion, but I don't have anything specific to add right now. Mr. Halvin. Thank you. Um, I did, this was a good opportunity to reread the tree management plan, um, which I did in the last few days. And then I had a conversation with one of the co-chairs of the, the tree committee. And you know, it's an excellent document represented. I can't believe it's been five years since that's published. Uh, but there's a lot of research that went into it. Uh, in fact, my husband reminded me that he was one of the volunteers that Ms. Burden led on the tree survey that many years ago. That was a really great experience. And it set some really good context and history for the loss of Arlington's tree canopy over the last few decades and the goals to replenish it. And one of the things that she and I talked about, and I think agreed upon in principle, while not representing the board or representing her colleagues on the committee, is, is the benefits of updating that plan or providing a supplement or providing a report that would just give the select board in the town a window into the progress uh, and how we're doing. And uh, I'm not gonna put Mr. Pooler on the spot, but uh, I would recommend the, uh, the latest um, town manager updates from ACMI News last week where he happened to give some of last year's data about our net positive tree plantings uh, over, over loss. And that was encouraging news. It said to me that this is already on, is a, this is a priority for him and he brought it up in the interview. It's, it's, it's very much a priority in the town government. So I was really glad to see that and grateful for that, Mr. Town Manager. Um, I think for me, I mean, any, any select board member can talk to any tree committee member at any time. I don't know that the action is necessary for that. I think that a more uh, useful discussion would be if this board has any suggested direction to give the tree committee that could be worthy of our consideration, either formally or informally, um, such as a request to provide, you know, perhaps after town meeting settles down, you know, provide uh, uh, some kind of a written update to that plan just as, as a report. And, uh, and, and I think the final thing I would say is I think what's missing for me in this conversation is the role of our tree warden, who is a town employee. 
as I read the tree committee bylaw, their role is to support the tree department. Um, I don't think that, you know, they're not a policy board. Uh, we are, you know, when it comes to these decisions. I absolutely welcome and value their expertise, but I tend to view them as supporting of the tree warden uh, pr principally, and I think that for me, uh, any of these conversations really need to start with that professional that we employ to manage the tree department and to, and to implement the tree plan, because I think that the structure of the committee is, is such that they support, uh, in this case, him and his work. So those are just my thoughts. I don't know if that's uh, particularly actionable. I don't, I don't think they'd contravene anything that Mr. Diggins suggested that we do, but that's how I would look up about structuring some of this. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Anyone else? Um, well, Mr. as you said, Mr. Oh, Mr. 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 Chair. Mr. 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 Chair. Yeah, I'm sorry, I saw Mr. Um, Mr. Um, Cooler's hand. Yes, thank you. Um, so the, uh, the tree management plan did call for uh, an increase of 2,000 trees, um, basically at 100 trees a year, net gain. Over the last four years, um, we've had a total increase of 590 trees, so or about 190 ahead of schedule. Um, sometimes, you know, we have ups and downs because of weather or microbursts or so forth. But on, in general, uh, we have done a good job of planting trees here. And in my remarks the other day, I also noted that in addition to the trees that are being planted under this plan, we've had uh, about 60 trees planted on private land with uh, the help of the tree committee. And I don't remember the exact number right off the top of my head now, but there have been other trees that have been planted through other funds over and above that. So um, I think the town is making great progress. Um, we set out a goal for how many new trees we wanted to set out, um, and um, we are ahead of that goal. So I just wanted to inform you and, and the public of that. Thank you. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, just one of those cases where, I mean, I, I generally do tend to be the permission um, first rather than, you know, um, asking for forgiveness. I mean, and so, so, I mean, I realized that I could talk to anyone. I mean, I really wanted to bring this up so that he's not like, well, Len's just going off on his own doing something that the board might eventually have to, like, weigh in on. I mean, I wanted to let you know that I wanted to have this conversation and to get some input from you about maybe directions in which the conversation uh, could go. I mean, so, so I guess more so than anything else, it's a kind of a courtesy item on the agenda. So, so I thank you for <coughs> having this little bit of a conversation with me. So we'll move on to the next item, which is a discussion and potential vote of referrals to the Public Memorial Committee. Um, and they also um, are going to be seeking a, a new member. I mean, so, so uh, this comes from, you know, primarily from uh, the article in the previous town meetings, Warren, being regarding um, naming a section of roadway that has no name after one of the uh, Mali Magli Magliazzi brothers. Um, and, and so uh, we voted no action. Well, actually, while well, town meeting voted no action on it, I mean, with the understanding that we would um, take that to the Public Memorials Committee. I, mean, I held back on pushing it forward because I wanted to understand more about the Public Memorials Committee and and, and I mean, how it how it, it did does what it did what it how it does what it do how it functions. You know, and and so um, it took a little while for that to happen. I finally got had a conversation um, with the chair I mean, and and um, I did see the, um, their, um, their roles, I mean, um, and they are, I think they're pretty good. You know, um, and, and so I would, at this point, like to move forward uh, that um, request. We also got one in uh, just recently regarding renaming Downing Square, I mean, and also asked um, for them to uh, maybe weigh in and give us some ideas about how to potentially memorialize, memorialize uh, Marie Kapelka. Uh, so, um, so that's where the potential vote is. I mean, uh, so I now turn it over to my colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, first of all, I, I suggest that the dining square matter might be better, best reserved for the uh, correspondence received item, so, uh, since since that's a specific item to suggest. I think in uh, and that's your discretion, of course, Mr. Chair. Um, one question I have is, uh, and I spoke with Ms. Marr about this earlier today. Uh, I just requested some some clarification. I think this committee has been, uh, by its very nature, incidental in its in its requirements to meet, and that's just as it should be. Um, but I, I suggest that we complete our review of the membership in the terms of office. I think there's maybe a disconnect between what's published and what's happened in the public record um, in this case. So I think that in addition to making referrals, I would suggest um, that that we evaluate the membership to make sure that everyone's up to date and you know if there are any reappointments or new appointments um, needed that would be a, a useful thing um and um and, uh, and i had one other thought and it just left my mind so i guess i'm done oh, that's did, you, yep. did you want to say something else about the makeup of the i'm community? sure if it's important it'll come back to me oh, <laughs> so yeah sorry. thanks that's right no no problem i see i'm seeing several Maybe I'm seeing everyone's hand. I'm certainly seeing Mr. Hurd's I and mean, Ms. Mahan. I saw Ms. Mahan's first, so I'll go with Ms. Mahan. Um, sort of to piggyback on what my colleague Mr. Helmuth was saying, again, I'm going by my memory. Um, <laughs> and something could have changed, although I was right about the election workers. We haven't seen it in three years. But um, could we? It's my memory that, and if anyone knows the correct information that can say I'm right or wrong, I'd definitely welcome it. I believe with the Public Memorials Committee, unless the membership, committee members' membership has been changed, I seem to have recall in my head that once members get appointed, they stay appointed, um, I want to say, until they resign. Does anyone remember that about the Public mem uh, a Memorial Committee? And, and what I would say is, if that's the case, if I'm correct, that so one of the things I like about reappointments is if there's a new person on the board or if you're not a new person but you've been here and you just haven't had a chance in three years to thank that person, um, you know, that's sort of an opportunity. Or if you, so I guess what I would um, say through you to the chair, I'm pretty sure my memory is correct and um, I would like to uh, have the discussion that if my memory is correct that public memorial committee members once they're appointed they're not reappointed they stay appointed until I don't want to say ad infinitum I can't think of them uh, I just remember my point <laughs> uh, if, if that's the case that we have a discussion because I'd like to have it comport with other committees um, whether it's initially might have to be staggered because everyone would come up at the same time um, but if it is that you're appointed and you're you're a jet for a jet for the rest of your life. I'd like to uh, a All right. parallel. So what I we do that. I'm done with that. Thank you. I think that would go to Mr. Heim for him to determine for us. Is that correct, Mr. Heim? Mr. Or I see Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Chair, I, I, I actually have the, the, the bylaw here in front of me. If that's in sure. it, it, it actually calls for three year terms and, and similar to other committees the members stay on until their successors are, are qualified and appointed. So, oh, they, so they're years. effectively, okay. you, you remain on the committee until, until a successor is appointed. Right. Uh, and duly appointed and qualified is actually the term of art there. Um, so Mr. Helmuth and, and then I think Mr. Hurd had his hand up. So Mr. Helmuth. Thank you. Actually, that uh, you helped me remember my last point, and that was what I was. I wanted to clarify what I was saying. That I was actually aware of of, of the uh, of the bylaw, Mr. DeCourcy mentioned, um, and just that the terms of office don't necessarily roll over for the full three years. It's just that the person stays on unless we do something. So both of those things are, are true. But I wanted to give me a as aware of that. Not to suggest that we do anything other than we just check that, because I think if we're reactivating committee and ask them to do work, it would be a good time to come up to date with that, even if it's nothing more to do reappoint and to, and to thank. So. Um, Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I think on, on this, and, and I took the agenda item, I, I have a couple things to say on the request for a referral at the time we get to that in correspondence received. So with the, the board's indulgence, I'd rather not vote on that referral as part of this Agenda. I'm not going to move it, and you know, if another member wants to, I suppose we can address it now. But I, I think for this 
item, I think we need to take a look at what the status is of the appointments. But I'd also like to ask uh, town council, and he hasn't been given an opportunity to do that in advance of the meeting, is you know, help us take a look at the language here in terms of um, you know, the charge here is that the committee shall be the official source for memorial, memorialization, and I, I, I didn't say that word very well, of persons by the town. Um, just in terms of what that means and, and, and what, what our role is, my understanding in doing a little research on, on this bylaw, this, this was, the committee was created in 1984 when Collins Corner, which is Leonard Collins, was a, a, wrote for the advocate and was very active in the community. There was the Reddit Schooler Court in Mass Ave, there was a memorial to him. And in the 1984 town meeting, this public memorial committee was created and Mrs. Mahan would know better over the years, but I mean, I know they were active when there was discussion about renaming the football field behind the high school back in 2005. Hasn't been a lot of activity otherwise, but I, I think just to get an understanding as to what the, the bylaw or what the, their powers are, what the status of the individuals are in, in the terms before we start talking about where we, where we go with this, um, because it, it just, um, it just seems to me that I don't remember ever reappointing someone in the three and a half years I've been on the board. So I, I, I would guess just about everybody's a holdover. Um, and, and so be nice just to get that clarified. I, can I just, there is one person that was reappointed in the last year. The rest of them are expired. Okay, someone, okay thank you. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Um, Mr. Hurd? Well, I guess just a question for Attorney Heim because it sounds like we're being asked to specifically send a few items to the Public Memorials Commission. Is the agenda item sufficiently, are we in violation of the open meeting line? Because I didn't actually know what this agenda item was and it doesn't mention the items that we're being asked to send along to the Public Memorials Committee. So is, and, uh, is it, to, defined enough in this agenda for us to make that vote. Mr. Chair, so the agenda item states, just in case folks are following along, referrals to public memorial committee seeking a new member. Um, it's clear that anticipated for discussion were some kind of referrals to the public memorial committee. Uh, the specific referrals at issue haven't been enumerated. So, um, it's a little bit on the border. I would say, you know, if the board wants to proceed, there's a good faith articulation that this is a summary of what you're going to be discussing. Um, so I, I certainly think you can proceed. I, I, I don't know it's as clear as I would ideally like it to be in terms of saying, referring, you know, this specific bench or this specific field because the idea in part would be to get the stakeholders necessary to provide comment on that specific thing. So I, I suppose I would say I would prefer it to be a little bit more specific, but I, I wouldn't say that it's per se a violation. Yeah. I mean, I thought we were discussing a procedure to refer item things to the Public Memorials Committee rather than specific items. I'm just saying, yeah. I appreciate that, Mr. Hart. Yeah, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate that too. I, I would like to suggest that perhaps because the rationale has, was presented to us in the Warren article hearings by Mr. Schlickman, that we do refer the Malatzi Way, Malatzi Boulevard uh, proposal to the Public Memorials Committee because we already said that we would. Uh, or at least we agreed that we did. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I'll defer to my colleagues, if it would be better to to notice that for next for our next meeting, um, so that it's more clear and Attorney Heim is is uh, more comfortable with that. I think that's fine with me. But I I'd like to make that suggestion to my colleagues that we, as, especially as we head into another cycle of town meeting, I think town meeting could reasonably come back and ask us what happened with that if anybody cares about it. I'll second that motion. Yeah, what was my motion? <laughs> if you want me to make it, that um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I'd like to move that um, that we a refer uh, Mr. Schlickman's request um, and subsequent to that town meetings vote 
regarding Maglio Z-Way, I'm not going to say it right, <laughs> to the Public, Public Memorials Committee to initiate the process with them. And then um, the second part, I don't think we need a motion, which is the, um, the chair and town council are going to um, gather the information on committee members, um, years, you know, uh, who was appointed recently, who isn't, um, and then when the chair deems it appropriate at a future agenda, he'll put that on as an agenda item to give us all that information and then have the discussion around that, around that um, so we can get membership and reappointments back into the, the normal course of business. So I guess my sole motion would be, because we d don't need a motion to um, ask the chair to do that since he already has indicated he would, um, w would be to just on the Magliozzi um, request, refer that to the Public Memorials Committee. Second. So we have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Yes. Yeah, so we have, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, so we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan. Oh, sorry. What he said is that. Sorry. Second. No and a second by Mr. Hurd. You know, so any discussion, questions? Well, I'll, I'll just add to this. I mean, so what I was hearing Mr. Corsi say, though, is that he really wanted a, a better um, understanding of, of what the charge of this um, committee commission is I mean, um, before we I mean, send anything over. I mean, and and I, mean, I think that would be good. I mean, um, uh, I mean, uh, we can certainly send something over and then, and then say, wait. I mean, uh, uh, and, and, and then we do, we're going to find out, do the research, I mean, and then proceed accordingly, you know, um, but um, I thought, I thought Mr. Zucorsi raised some good points and something that I think we should do. So if we are to do that, I think it, it might be a little more confusing if we send something over right now and then say wait, as opposed to waiting until we get the information that we will get from our research, I mean, and then making a decision. Mr. Chair? Yeah, Ms. Mahan? Um, I think for this particular request, since it started, it's coming up on a year ago, I believe yeah. what Mr. DeCourcy, and I don't mean to speak to him, but I will say, I, I believe it, it was, it's a different request that's under correspondence received, um, uh, and we'll get to that discussion when we get to it. So um, I really think we should, I, I just would advocate that we, you know, it, we refer that, um, either the chair or um, the acting board administrator can um, contact the committee to let them know that it's coming, but that there are some housekeeping membership um, issues we're going to deal with first um, before they get to that. And, and I agree maybe we should hold any other requests that have come in. We have one right now um, within the past two weeks, um, but, that, um, but I think we should have Magliozzi there so that when everything is defined, we're ready to go with that one right away. So, but I'll leave it to my colleagues on the vote. Well, I appreciate that. Mrs. DeCorsi. Yeah, and, and Mrs. Mahan is, is, is right. My concern is with the, the correspondence received on the Downing Square request, and, and um, so I, I don't have an issue with the, the referral at this time uh, on, the, on the other matter that came up last year. Right. I misunderstood. Thank you. You know, so. So I think then at this point, we're all set. So on a motion you know, to uh, refer the um, proposal that uh, we create a Magliazzi Boulevard I me mean, for that unnamed roadway uh, by Mr. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank Mr. you. Mr. Diggins? Excuse me. Yes. Mr. Unanimous vote. Great. You know, so we're moving on now to correspondence received. You know, so we have Arlington Climate Resiliency Resources Health Health um, by Beth Malachek and a proposal to rename Downey Square by Corey Smith and the uh, receipt of the uh, well, online ADA compliance strategy and training plan uh, by General Roman, our public information officer. Mr. Corsi? Yeah, I, I, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move receipt of the various pieces of correspondence, but I'd like to speak 
to number 17 specifically, if I could? Yes, please. Okay. Um, so there was a request here for referral. I, I cannot support a referral of this matter to the Public Memorial Committee. And, and um, the reason why is, is in looking at the letter, and there was a reference made to Downing Square. Downing Memorial Square was dedicated on May 5th, 1946. So about 500 people who attended the dedication of two brothers, both of whom died during World War II. James Francis Downing died on September 10th, 1943, in a plane crash in California while in the service. He attended West Point, um, he attended MIT, and, and was in California serving our country. His brother Cornelius died in combat on November 20th, 1944 in Italy. Um, at the ceremony were two other Downing brothers, both of whom were in the service. Cornelius Downing, who was a master sergeant, killed in action, had a widow who um, did, had a baby, I believe it was a baby boy. He never saw his child because he was serving our country. Um, that memorial is still there. Um, we honor our veterans. We honor the service of the Downing family. They were, they lived at 9 Blossom Street, down the street from Downing Square. I, I can't support any change or even any discussion of changing the name there. And, and what I'd like to do is a couple news articles, one from The Advocate, one from Arlington News, which is a newspaper back in the time that described the service that they gave to our country and the speakers who included one of our, our congressperson at the time, uh, Edith North, North Rogers, who attended the ceremony. I'd like to make that part of the record of this meeting. Um, but um, I, I'd move receipt, but I, I can't do anything further with it. Ms. Mahan? Mm -hmm. I'd like to second it and also say thank you. I, I agree on, on, on the Downing Square. Um, this board nor the Public Memorial Committee has never, first of all, the issue of renaming something, um, changing from Downing Square, I wouldn't even entertain at all. Um, but um, to start making a practice about businesses, um, I know there were representations in the letter um, regarding uh, a gratitude by the letter writer and perhaps a second, but um, what I'd like to do is also not refer um, agenda item 17 to the public memorial committee and if um, I'm not saying the chair has to do this and or if um, the uh, person who submitted the request reaches out to you. Traditionally, it's been the Chamber of Commerce that recognizes businesses um, here in Arlington. Um, uh, that's something in Comport, uh, that's something that they traditionally do um, and the town hasn't done. So um, I agree with Mr. DeCourcy for all the points that he stated far more eloquently than I did. And um, I did have something on a question on agenda item 16, and I'm gonna look to my right, I don't know if my colleagues, um, if I monopolize the time on 17, if not, I would ask <clears throat> if um, on 17, the correspondence from a public information officer regarding ADA compliance, which um, I'm extremely pleased um, to see that in there, and I understand from the reading of it that um, all employees staff, I can't remember what word they used, that post to the website, A, will receive training. Um, if the town manager could in the next whatever amount of weeks, because it sounds like this isn't happening like next week or anything like that, or maybe it is, if um, you could just provide the board with information regarding, um, unless you can answer it tonight, is it literally every employee that posts? Is it every department head of a of an office that posts? Um... Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, yes Ms. Willard. Um So uh, Joan Roman, our public information officer, has a working group of people who do post. So they're within every office. There's probably one or two people who have the skill to do it. Um, not everybody does. I, I, for example, have no idea how to post something. So um, there are certain staff throughout Town Hall and other departments who know how to do this. 
Um, she is just starting this training. She's been doing various other trainings over the years, but this is a particular focus on this area. And she does intend to report back to the board more specifically about progress uh, in the future. So um, there will be f further information coming. Okay, so then um, I'll look to whenever you and she deem it's an appropriate time to provide the, the board um, with the backup information. And I just, I would ask if it's too voluminous and too many pages, then I can just check in with the office, <clears throat> the select board office with the person that's designated from there. But if it's not, um, and she probably will do this anyways, Ms. Roman, that um, I, I, I'm certainly interested in what ADA compliance is to the town website mm -hmm. if I were a person posting to it, which I, I do not have access, nor should I should, should I have access to the town website. But um, if that's something that could be included in the report, unless it's something, A, it shouldn't be, or it's sensitive information, or it's too long, and if not, I'll check with the person in the office. If I might just add one item. Yes, we had a, an example of it tonight when Julie Brazil was talking about a piece of paper with a date stamp on it, yeah. Yeah. and the ability of somebody to read those documents that doesn't have text that is recognizable that way is an ADA problem. So when you're posting things or creating things, it has to be essentially machine readable. And so it's teaching people how to set up their documents, how to create their documents in the first place so that everything on it is going to be accessible uh, to somebody who, who needs help re uh, reading those documents. Okay. Thank you. So uh, once again, I second Mr. DeCourcy's motion and also agree not to refer agenda item 17. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mahog. Anyone else? Mr. Corsi? I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Chair. There's one thing I just meant to add, and it just goes to the, the Downing Square. I just want to read a very brief quote from, from, from that day, um, one of the speakers, and, and uh, I think it's apt, uh, given what we were discussing, and, and the quote is, goes as follows. In days to come, people may ask, what means this square? What does this square mean? Um, and the speaker said, it means that America does not forget those who gave their lives for their country, this is only one of the signposts of America. And um, you know, these are one of those days and, and we remember the Downing Brothers. Great. Well, thank you very much, me. So with uh, respect to not referring, I'm fine with that. I, mean, I was also fine with referring because I figured it would not be approved and that the Memorial Committee would explain why that request wouldn't be honored. You know, I mean, so it would be an opportunity for the memorials committee to educate me, the, the um, requester, as well as everyone else in town, you know, as to why that square was named as its name and why uh, we aren't going to change it. That education is taking place here, you know, uh, and and hopefully, you know, more people um, will will understand why. I mean, so I'm fine with not referring, but that was why. I was fine with also referring it. Uh, and with respect to item 18 and the ADA compliance strategy, you know, I appreciated the town manager sending this um, um, to me. And I decided to do it as correspondence received instead of a uh, full-fledged item because it did indicate that there was going to be follow-up uh, later on, the extensive follow-up later on. So I figured we'd wait and get a, a report when there was more to report me versus a preliminary description of what the plan is at this point. But that said, if someone wants it to be an agenda item um, sooner rather than later, I'll be happy you know, to put it on um, an agenda as soon as possible. Otherwise, we'll wait until we have some more progress and then we can get a report um, back in probably in a year or so. So um, with a motion to receive um, all the items but not to refer item number 17, uh, uh, by Mr. Corsi and a second by Mrs. Mahan. Um, Mr. Hahn? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you very much. And so um, we have the opportunity for a second open forum. Is there anyone there? No, there's no hands raised at this time. Yeah. Great. So I won't read the. Um, preamble uh, and so now I'll do business. Sorry. I'll start with some Ms. Meyer. Ms. Meyer. 
No, no, no. I was clearing my throat. I'm sorry. No, no, and and and, and I actually was saying um, Ashley's name is Mara. Oh, no, no business. Thank you. <laughs> no, no business. Thank you. Fuller. No, no business. Thank you. Mr. Hurd. Uh, no, no business. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. No, no business. Mr. Corsi. No, new business. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put everything on number four, 24. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I do have new business. <laughs> I do have new business. Three things. <laughs> I'll try to do it quickly. One is, Mr. Chairman, there's a. Uh, envelope here with your name on it so I just wanted to bring that to your attention I don't know what it is if it's a request of you or a thank you or something so I'll give that back to Ms. Marr so just so you know that it's here um, the second one I won't go into too much detail but when I get home I'm going to forward an email to um, the town manager and to the acting board administrator to then forward to my colleagues as an FYI because I have seen today, well, it started yesterday, but it, it also is again today, that there's a posting on one of the Arlington lists regarding an additional yard waste um, pickup. Uh, and it indicated from my memory that um, our recycling coordinator was contacted and that there would be uh, something perhaps provided. I don't want to provide any more information because if that's not the case, because um, we don't have anything official on the town website or anything like that. But as soon as I get home, I'm going to forward that. And I would ask the town manager if that is the case. I mean, if it's not the case, let us know that too. But if that is the case, if you could just um, indicate that to the board, because I can't tell you how many times I've gone into Dunkin' Donuts or Walgreens and they're like, what do you mean I can't eat December 9th? So um, I'm not going to say anything more on that, what I think the date is and all that. <laughs> And then my last new business is um, I would uh, request through the chair, especially with the 2023 year coming and new year starting, you know, we have the fiscal year, we have the calendar year. Um, I also had a conversation with the chair, met with Karen, um, met with our human resources director, um, Ms. Malloy earlier this morning and what I'd like to do is um, also start the process um, to uh, I'm just going to put dates out and people um, on Friday to post the board administrator job the internal posting for it to go out on Friday uh, in concert with um, what Miss Malloy does you know for similar positions I think it's usually open two weeks but don't hold me on that um, and then go forward from there in the process um, what I'd like to what if I had my way is that by the beginning of 2023 but I'm not going to say January 1st but sooner rather than later that we um, have a permanent uh, board administrator especially with all the duties that kick in come January 1st that the you know you know common victuallers liveries things like that where we need an official not that we can't have an acting um, board administrator sign that and do all that but um, I'd, I'd like to move forward that that I'd like it to start on Friday and I guess I would leave it to my colleagues and we can't really discuss it under new business but um, what I would request and that may not happen I'm just trying to say what's in my head and what I discussed with Ms. Malloy, but maybe by Thursday morning, if um, my colleagues uh, contacted the chair and or Ms. Malloy, um, so both of them can get a sense of where you all are at, because I could be way off base and people don't see the need to, you know, maybe I'm doing it too quickly, but uh, so that's the other part of my new business, just to report that I had a conversation only with the chair last Thursday with Ms. Malloy this morning, um, I'd like to post uh, the internal posting for the board administrator position. I'm only one person, so I'll leave it to my colleagues whether you speak to the chair and or Ms. Malloy, if possible, before the end of this week. Um, and I'm not saying my, me picking the date is going to be the date. I know it's ambitious, so I just want to do that. So that's my last new business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you to my colleagues. I'm sorry I'm running.
No problem. No problem at all. You know, I, I, I just want to be respectful of opening the email and not say much on that last item except to um, say that I am planning on having a conversation with Mrs. Malloy and, um, this week, you know, so uh, thank you very much for that. And, you know, the other thing is um, I'd like to express appreciation to um, Ms., uh, Ms., Ms. Meyer and also um, Ms. DeFrancisco uh, uh, to put pulling together the members of the um, committees mean that the select board, um, the committees to which the select board makes appointments and uh, committees to which the town uh, town manager makes appointments. I mean, uh, things were quite a bit out of date. It, um, it, it took some effort I mean, and, and it's very much appreciated. I mean, the main reason I wanted it is because I wanted to send letters I mean, to the chairs of these committees, I mean, asking them to um, weigh in on, on their thoughts about the um, town manager selection process. I mean, uh, so, so, um, so, so, um, so I have that and now I can do that outreach. And, and the last item is our next meeting. Uh, and when, where, um, and so I know here, um, and I, I think we had a little bit of discussion on the last time Mrs. Mah uh, Mrs. Mrs. Mahan was with us about whether or not we were going to go out um, afterwards I meet. Mean, normally that's a meeting that starts early and we do a shortened meeting and then we head out. Uh, I don't think we made a decision, you know, so I think if we're gonna, we have to make a decision tonight, right? I'd like to do that. <laughs> what was that? I mean, that works for me. So there's a question, so we're gonna have a short agenda and start the meeting at six o'clock. So it's going, to, it's going to be on Wednesday, the 21st. So, so we like to start early and, 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 then, and then go out. Okay. Okay. I think everybody's nodding here, Mr. Chairman, in the affirmative. All right. All right. I, mean, I guess we can just decide on the spot um, when to go out. Okay. All right. Um, that's fine. And so, um, so then. I'll see you there, you know, on the 21st and 6th. Uh, Move and to adjourn. Second. Yes. All right. So on a motion to adjourn by Mr. Mahan and a second by Mr. Helmuth. Mr. Hahn. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mr. Mahan. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Go All right, folks. Well, thank you very much. Have a good night.